morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to the House of Nerd Show. We're coming at you live, full effect. Halloween L. Joe, how you guys doing today? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Not too shabby? No, not too shabby. Didn't get home in too late from the mystery murder uh, dinner last night, so okay. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Okay. L, how's it going? I attended the same dinner as the victim, so it was pretty chill. <laughs> same dinner as the victim. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> pretty quiet then, right? This was a pretty, pretty quiet night. <laughs> pretty quiet then. It was dead. It was dead. I got you. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. It took me a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's the House of Nurture. We're live, man. We're hyped today because we got, yes. we got, a, we got a big show. Some super cool guests, uh, Chip Sadarsky, Jacob Phillips of New Bern fame. Uh, we're going to bring them on uh, shortly uh, just to give you guys a heads up of what else we've got coming on later on in the show. Uh, after the interview, we've got Week in Review. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Copper Drop. We're going to be pitching to Joey. Or no, who, who are we pitching to? Oh, uh, obviously Joe. me because yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the picks are. Yeah, yeah, pitching yeah we're Joe. pitching. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, Halloween shenanigans, man. We're here to hang out with uh, the one and only Chip Sadarsky and Jacob Phillips of New Bern fame. What's going on, gentlemen? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, guys. Hey. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, good. Bit Not tired, bit hungover. Yeah? Oh, and yeah. Jacob had a party last night. Didn't invite me. It, I, I feel that I, I had I had a whole plan in my head. I totally dropped the ball in, in the excitement. I was I had this handy and I forgot to 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 put this guy on. <laughs> I swear to God, it was it was my intention to start the show off with this, and somehow in the excitement, I totally forgot about it. Um, we'll see. I think that that moment has has passed, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so um, did, did all of you do Halloween parties last night? Am I the only one that didn't? Oh, I didn't do a party. I was at home. Okay. <laughs> no. Lies, lies. Yeah. She, she was <laughs> the one who partied probably the hardest of, of all of no. us. Um, I, I, uh, I, I, I've, I've got a pretty hard line stance on these things. I, I feel like uh, Halloween parties are for uh, single people because it's just too sexy of a night. <laughs> It was, uh, we did a, an 1870s murder mystery supper. So let's say the girls had a lot of halter tops. And uh, so the ladies were dressed pretty sexy last night. I got to say that. <laughs> I'm sure the guys were too. <laughs> the ones who made an effort weren't too bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jacob, according according to your Twitter receipts, uh, you may have uh, had, had your own Halloween plans last night. Yeah, my girlfriend had a Halloween party, just like a little, a little get together. So the so I I was uh, Count von Count from Sesame Street. Count van Count, no way. Yeah. Okay. Did the full uh, purple and I, the I fake nose and everything. It would have been awesome if you would have came in costume, man. Should <laughs> yeah. have just kept it on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much uh, for coming on the show. Uh, we're super excited to talk to you. Uh, we're here to talk about Newburn, your new book, Image Comics, uh, issue number one, coming out this Wednesday, uh, November the third. And, yep. and and that's right, you 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 saw that correctly. When the Commonwealth superpowers come <laughs> together, uh, you know, Canada, the UK, Great Britain. Uh, you guys have combined. Uh, Jacob, what are your feelings on the monarchy? Because uh, as a Canadian, I'm I'm not much of a fan. No, not really. Last no. night, one of the one of the people that came to the party last night dressed as uh, Princess Diana, and that's Ooh. close. That's as close to like. That's the only one that anyone seems to like. But I'm not, even then, I'm not. You know, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, like we've got the queen on our money here, and I'm just like, it makes no yeah. sense. No. Like we're so far away from you guys. Uh, <laughs> ugh, don't get me started. I, when I when I work for I work for a newspaper, I had to cover um, yeah. Prince Charles and Camilla's visit. Oh yeah. And mm. so I was part of like the press, like following them everywhere, and uh, being on the bus with like the UK press, whose only job is to follow the royals, was so depressing. Yeah. Like it's just the worst life I can imagine. 
so following you, people simply because of how they were born. Like it's just just nuts. Yeah. Anyways, so we can go the, on about the monarchy yeah. for yeah, an hour if you want. Yeah, fuck New Bern, man. Let's, no. let's, go, <laughs> let's take a deep dive into the monarchy. Oh, I'm so bad at promoting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I've turned off all monarchists. Oh, I'm rude. rude. I mean, we could probably have an hour's chat on on Chip Zdarsky's, uh his beat on 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 the mon on the monarchy there. Uh, it might it might affect sales across the the pond. Yeah. Though, so let's let's skip that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but uh, you know, why don't uh for those folks who who might be sleeping under a rock, uh. Why don't you, uh, why don't you, gentlemen, uh, tell the fine viewers, the fine folks at home, uh, a little bit about yourselves, and uh, and how you guys, how, how did you guys uh, connect uh, to get together to uh, put out this uh, fantastic uh, number one issue of Uber? Uh Well, I'll start with uh, Jacob who can introduce himself and tell everyone how great he is. Jacob, go. <laughs> um, I'm great. Um, <laughs> no, so I, I don't know, what do, I'm, I'm Jacob, and I draw, and I'm hungover, <laughs> no, I'm fine now, it's nice, it's, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon here now, so okay, I'm yeah. fine, but, um, he's just getting started back up, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, so I, I draw that Texas blood, I now draw Nuba, and I colour for, criminal and well sort of reckless um so i've been doing that for a few years and i was doing sort of freelance illustration before that which i still do as well and you know i do way too much and don't have any yeah. time to do anything that's why i'm in the studio on a sunday yeah um, yeah it's, it's a long slog of just putting out too much stuff but yeah, Man. yeah enjoy it i forget did you go to school for illustration yeah, I did illustration and animation. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but um, they didn't really like comics there, so yeah. I, I went sort of like really arty, and then came straight back to doing stuff like this. So. Yeah, that's funny because uh, I, I went to school for illustration, and they really frowned on comics there. Like you couldn't have comics in your portfolio, anything fantasy no. or comics, forget it. But yeah. now, Crazy. like myself, Jeff Lemire, and Ramon Perez all graduated from that school. And and so they want us to come all the time to give speeches. Oh yeah, they've had me. Comments. They've had me back in to do like speeches for their students now. Like yeah. on, like over the last sort of year or two, so I've been doing like Zoom ones. Yeah, but I'm like, oh look who came crawling back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. that's it. Once you're you make a name. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, much like Jacob, I I was an illustrator and uh, went to school for illustration and. Um, uh, worked at a newspaper for uh, about 13 years doing illustrations and uh, information graphics and kind of moved into writing and um, and yeah and then I did uh, uh, Sex Criminals with Matt Fraction um, as the illustrator and that took off and Marvel took note and uh, I started writing Howard the Duck for them in 2013 mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah since then I've been I've been mostly a writer Though now I've been I've been drawing a comic again on my Substack called Public Domain, which has been a mm. lot of fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've just been working for all the companies and keep my head above water like Jacob because I also take on too mm. much. And uh, yeah. yeah, you definitely have a lot on your plate right now, man. You got a lot of stuff coming out. DC, your own stuff, Marvel. You're I feel all over it, the place. Uh, Jacob's got it worse. Like writing, like sometimes you can bang out. Like, well, yeah. sometimes a script will take a really long time. Sometimes it'll take a short amount of time. But like, if you're on yeah. deadline crunch, you can do it. Whereas with uh, Illustrate, I don't know how Jacob does two monthly comics. Like, that's just that Slowly. blows my mind. Slowly, um, yeah. I miss, totally, yeah. I miss every single deadline for both books. Uh, so <laughs> not, not, not not really for Newburn because they're kind of arbitrary deadlines. Like Jacob's yeah. already done like six issues of the book. Six issues. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're oh, wow. we're well ahead. I don't I don't yeah. predict well, problems. Now I'm 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 just about to finish. I'm <clears throat> currently doing Texas Blood number thirteen, the yeah. Christmas one. Okay. And then yeah. we're taking a break. So then I'll be able to do more new burn. Get another so you, like, you interchange yeah, another your schedule stack. for from book well, to book. Okay. Uh, for the last sort of six months I've been doing both just at the same time. time. Yeah. yeah. Um because we had a bit of lead time on Texas Blood and we've got loads of lead time on New Bird, so I can sort of so all together. How, how many issues is that Texas Blood going to go for? Do you know? I think like 30. 
30? Yeah, okay. Um, so we're almost halfway through. It's funny, back in the day when you said yes to um, Newburn, and I, I knew, I think at that point, you'd already started that Texas Blood, and I assumed it was a miniseries. I assumed it was like five issues. Like, oh, he'll have to do that, and then he can work on Newburn. But like, <laughs> once I once I realized, like, oh, no, the story keeps going. Keeps yeah. going. Like, like, what is Jacob doing? Is he crazy? <laughs> yeah. Well, look, luckily, we've sort of set it up with Texas Blood where we can take, we can do six issues, then have six, six months off. And, yeah. You know, yeah. So it's like... I can I can sort of spread it out nicely. But yeah, when you've, New, New Bern's a bit shorter in terms of story pages because there's sixty yeah, exactly. page yeah. kind of main stories in there. So but yeah, when, that when, helps. when you first took on another book, was that quite daunting? And did the stress level just like you know because you had Texas Blood going yeah. and now Newborn, so you're gonna be working on two books at the same time? Like, yeah. Do, do you feel the pressure of uh, taking on the those two projects at the same time, or I think at the well, then, when I said yes, I didn't even think about it. And I was like, oh, that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll make it work. And, then, and now I'm yeah. like, oh, God, I've, I've got so much to do. But, <laughs> so um, much. Yeah. No, it's not too bad. Like, I, I, you know, I just come in every day and draw things. So it's like, it gets done. You yeah, know, yeah. And I'm quite fast. I can do, like, I can... Oh, oh. oh. So doing an issue of Newburn will take me two to draw. Yeah. Um, so it's not like... It's it's you know it doesn't take me the whole month to do yeah yeah new burn, so. yeah yeah the thing was, with art is you just got to sit down and do it like that's the one thing I realized yeah. like now with my schedule because I'm drawing a new comic my whole deal is I come into the studio by about six thirty seven in the morning I sit down and I don't open email I don't do anything I just sit down and I start drawing mm -hmm. and I don't allow myself to eat breakfast until I'm done the page <laughs> 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 which is a good incentive. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I can usually, I can finish the page around 10. Uh, sometimes it's 11 or noon and I'm quite hungry, but, um, but then I can have breakfast and get on with the rest of my day. Like it's, and, but, but the rest of the day is writing. So it's like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, but with drawing, it's like, you just sit and you just do it. And it gets, <coughs> yeah. Chip, with the, with the different challenges between uh, uh, writing versus uh, drawing, is, do you have a, a preference between the two or one that maybe you, you enjoy a little bit more over the other? No, I mean, it depends on the day. Like um, there are a lot of things I enjoy about the illustrating. Um, the things I don't enjoy are it's hard on the body. Mm. Like if I, I find like my neck, my back, my arm, like uh, uh, it's detrimental to my health um, and it's laborious. It, it does take a lot of concentration to, to do it. Uh, one of the nice parts about it is the fact that the whole time on sex criminals um nobody would ever uh shit on my art it would always shit on the story <laughs> <laughs> because because if you if you like my art you're gonna like my art in issue one you're gonna like my art in issue 30 like yeah that's not gonna change but the story changes and wh what happens to characters changes so the writer takes a lot of the brunt of that whether it's good or bad right yeah um which is the thing i've noticed obviously doing like marvel and dc stuff like one issue people could love me the other issue people could hate me but they're always going to love or not like the artist like yeah. that doesn't change um so yeah i mean it, it depends on the day it depends on the project i'm working on um if it's a cool thing usually in the early stages i get really excited and you know that's fun but sometimes when i'm on issue 20 of a book i'm just like oh what am i gonna do now and like it's a bit of a slog <laughs> So yeah, this is this is a question a bit for both of you because you mentioned, um, you know, the art the arts art issue one is the same. The art is going to be an issue twenty. Um, I mean, it, it gets better, obviously. Like like as artists, like we progress, but for yeah. the most part, it's not going to change so much that people are going to be like, "What? Like, it's like a different artist." The process doesn't change too much because I know I know Jacob, you you switched it up a little bit with that Texas Blood, correct? In the in the second yeah. arc. Uh, I guess in the first arc it was all digital. Is that, is that yeah? Correct? So it's all all digital, and now it's all the present day stuff because it sort of goes back and forth between 1981 and present day. Um, yeah. All the 1981 stuff is inked just traditionally, uh, pencil digital. No, yeah, pencil digitally still, and then all the modern day stuff is all digital inks. So it, it was just a way to mix it up a bit and make it like more interesting for me to do. And now I yeah. sort of regret it because I have to stand up to ink traditionally and okay. I like to be sat down all day. Um, so <laughs> that's the only negative. But, you know, it was just so I could like, well, it was, it was 
so that you could see the difference easily and and, yeah. and I changed the color up as well just so you can like easily tell um what you're looking at in terms yeah. of time period but also like you know it's still my drawing so it looks pretty similar but there's just like a you know a slight difference in it um and then with newburn i was i've just done it all all the inks are traditional um again just because i was at the time i started it i was only i was still working on the first half of texas blood mm -hmm. which is digital so i was like oh i'll do something different um yeah. which now looking back on issue one of newburn and this i think like the first two issues i look back and like oh god those inks like because i was still you know think like figuring out how to draw with a pen you know like yeah after years of doing digital stuff um like going back to that and having to relearn it so i think like if you like if you yeah if you like my artwork in issue one i think you'll love it in issue five yeah, it's, yeah. It just gets so much better. yeah you just refine yeah, yeah. and tweak it yeah for sure yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think we, we got a few. Like, L, do we have some of those uh, the stills, the screeners for for Newburn? Yes. If we can get those up, mm -hmm. and let me just. Uh, uh, and so you were saying, Jacob, the the inking on on Newburn is traditional. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And the covers, uh, like real paint oh, as well, sorry. which I hadn't done before, which is yeah. really hard. So like that that big face. I was like, I did it sort of in like ink washes and I went back in and like picked it out and it just kept going and going and going. So it's got way more paint on it than it was going to have because I can't just like, I can't just undo it. I had to keep mm. fixing it and fixing it. Oh, um, yeah. So again, I've been like learning, trying to learn how to paint. But, you know, I do like a, like a cover every two months. So I sort of forget everything that I'd learned the, <laughs> on the two before. Yeah. So each one gets... It's still very hard. Like the last yeah. one, I'm still not convinced about the, the cover that I did the other day because I'm just like I just don't like painting on it. So it's like, wow. Is no, the, you're 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 amazing. Uh, the, the cover to issue one is so great too. Oh yeah, I do like, I do like that cover. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely loving it. So yeah, we are we're here to talk uh, Newburn, your new book. How did you guys connect for this uh, for this book? First time working together. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I met uh, Jacob briefly at uh, the Toronto Comic Arts Festival uh, several years ago, oh, and uh, um, and I, I liked his stuff, and um, I'd seen a bunch of his illustration work around, but then I think I actually, I ordered his mini-comic um, after that, uh, and uh, when I got it, I was like, oh, wow, like, he's, he's actually an amazing storyteller, too, and so... Right away, I was like, oh, I should, I should do something with him, or, or offer my services to him, in some way. And so uh, I reached out, um, basically, kind of just kind of said, like, what do you want to draw? Like, like we could start from that point, and uh, and, and work our way out. And, and uh, Jacob had a bunch of kind of like, kind of location ideas. One of which was a prison, which I managed to sneak into uh, issue four of Newburn. Okay, um, which turns so out they're really hard to draw. It turns out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless unless you're like a three like, D oh, guy, so cool. and now I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I know. What I, I, I used said to... is like a white room, just a nice white room. Or like, <laughs> yeah. it's funny. Like, I I I kind of thought the same when you said that. Um, like uh, when I was starting out, I did like a black and white indie book called Prison Funnies, which was set in a prison. And uh, and my God, drawing prison bars just over and over again uh, oh, yeah. almost killed me. I, I I did a couple trips to San Francisco. <laughs> I did like the Alcatraz tour, and just all I did the whole time was just take reference shots. Oh wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I've got. I should have just sent you all my prison shots. I'm sorry, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> it's funny, like all the digital guys, like on Daredevil, I work with a uh, artist Marco Cicchetto, mm -hmm. and um, and all of his backgrounds are digital. And a lot of the guys I'm working with now, basically, just like kind of have the 3d kind of renderings and then they output them onto the page add some like gray to it and they're done um like that's when that's when 3d comes in handy for prison because he said i set a scene in daredevil in prison and he was just like oh easy here you go copy and paste like all yeah. these bars pop them in i'm like oh man wow i wish i had that when i was starting out yeah i, was I, just about to say. I built the i built the <clears throat> sort of cent central bit um in sketchup so i built okay. that and i could but then i just sort of like i'll just like take the screen grab and draw from that rather than use the actual thing in the image but yeah, yeah I, I, do, I do do that quite a bit if it's a recurring uh location, location. 
yeah. where I can just sort of, and I need to move. It's really hard to move around. Like I've been drawing a, a 1950s kitchen in this in this issue of Texas Blood, yeah. and it's like it's so hard to find any any decent reference anyway. But yeah. then you only get one photo, and then you have to try yeah. and figure out how to draw it from the other angle. Yeah, and, yeah, and like keep it because you can't just use the same thing over and over. So it's really, okay. so like three D models come in so handy. It's funny, yeah. Like I, I only use them really for cars. Yeah, I like, use just them to get different them. angles on cars and streets. But the um, what's the book? Scotty Young was writing a book for Image that just came out, kind of a horrorish thing. You, you promised me darkness. Oh yeah, something something in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the me you love in the dark. Sorry. The me you love in the dark. The me yeah. you love in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> artist on that, I guess what they did was they commissioned the whole three, building. The yeah. whole building. Yeah. From like a three D SketchUp kind of guy, That's and so amazing. he basically just got the model for the whole building. So every shot, house, he could just yeah. go through the whole house. Because it's, yeah. it's just one location for the comic. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, that's brilliant. I think it cost him like a grand or something to commission it. I think my, took I think my dad week. did that for, uh, he did a French book, um, which is all set on a spaceship. So he got someone to build the spaceship. Mm. Um, that's super cause smart. Because be, like, that kind of thing is impossible to draw as well. Like all that techie stuff. Oh no, yeah, so I'm hard. terrible at that. Because um, like, yeah. I just can't, my, my, I just don't have that like imagination, I don't think, to. Cool. I don't understand how any of it works, so it's really hard to. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with it, but for one drawing, you know, yeah. as soon as I have to change the angle of it, I'm like, oh, forget it. Yeah, there's no way. Um, Rewrite that scene, eh? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. So uh, we we talked about the kind of things we wanted to do, and then yeah. you know, kind of like one of those classic stories. One day, I was just going for a walk, and I was just like a kind of a bolt out of the blue. I just had the idea of like a guy who worked as a detective for all the mob families. Um. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, and, and, and Jacob was into it, and uh, kind of away we went. And it was like pre-pandemic when we started on it, and so we we basically had the kind of the pandemic to work on it, really. Yeah. Because we didn't know if we should solicit, where we were going to put it, if it was going to be, if image was going to be around. Like we didn't know anything that was going to happen, so um, it, it helped to kind of get ahead. I should mention what the book is about, because once again, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> um, uh, the book's about a, a, a private detective named Easton Newburn, who, unlike kind of private detectives and kind of most noir, he's super successful um, because his clients uh, are all the mob families in New York. Um, he's on retainer to all of them, and he's kind of the, uh, the untouchable one in New York, uh, like a United Nations inspector that kind of goes into war-torn countries. Like, you're not allowed to touch the guys in the blue helmets. Um, he's, he's that um, which obviously creates, you know, uh, some problems in his life and some uh, dangers. But um, we, we set out to, to do a book where you, essentially you kind of have like a, a, a procedural style mystery in each one that um, he's called in to solve and kind of mediate between the families, um, which has been a lot of fun to kind of come up with these scenarios. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so is, is Newburn will... Will we be will we going case to case, or is it going to be kind of focusing on one ongoing kind of, um, I guess, story? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we're going case to case, but at some point, uh, kind of a larger story starts to unfold. Um, I don't want to lose too much sight of doing the kind of the done in one stories because I like the idea of some being able to pick up any issue and like kind of getting a full story within it, running with it. Yeah. Yeah, but I also really like the idea of like the underlying kind of story that kind of takes us through. There are we're working on a couple of issues that are kind of like two parters right now, mm -hmm. um, just because the, the stories have gotten uh, big and kind of uh, more personal for the characters. Um, but yeah, like I, I I like the format. It's, it's part of the reason like we we kept the the main story down to sixteen pages plus kind of my text pages throughout um, to make them kind of quicker reads. Um, to make it so the issues can come out faster. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, to kind of give us like these like guardrails to, uh, to to not get too kind of lost in the weeds with mm -hmm. the story, which, which makes them feel a lot kind of more fast, intense, mm -hmm. which I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're like very like sharp and dense and you know, like you sort of go through, and it is like, it is all there, that, like, yeah. like ships yeah. in a really good 
job of like fitting like a whole thing into 16 pages <clears throat> and it, like it, it doesn't oh, i don't think at any point it feels mm. rushed or you know but, too short like, i think it, it works really nicely and it's still yeah like a fast read and it's been yeah, yeah it's been a fun exercise like i've done stories where like i did a book with chris anka called the white trees in which we kind of gave ourselves more space so it's like because it's like a fantasy world we wanted like you know just a page of kind of seeing the scenery and like kind of like a bit more kind of slow motion and that kind of decompression feeling to kind of create uh to create a feeling right mm-hmm. um it's so to go to this and kind of do the opposite has been super challenging but really interesting like kind of yeah. realizing like oh like you don't have a page that is kind of set up what the characters are doing that day right yeah. you just got to get into but- it like but I think you guys did a great job with this first issue to oh, thanks. really, really give the characters a solid footing so we can get a real feel for these characters, what they're about. And like the case was just the backdrop to establish these main players. And yeah. I thought you guys did a fantastic job of just setting that up to move forward. Like it was a it was a fantastic first issue. You get a really good feeling for who Newburn is. Uh, and, you know, it, you just and the progression of it was perfect, too. Like. Uh, I I can't say enough about how well you established that character in this first issue. Right off the bat, you you get a really clear v- feel for who this person is, and uh, awesome. like to do that in that number of pages in one issue is is a pretty solid feat. Oh, thanks. I mean, a lot of it comes down to Jacob's ability to have the characters act on the page, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think under any other artist, it'd be really kind of hard to sell the personalities of the characters, but Jacob's just so good at. Uh, uh, expression and, and gesture. Man, so you know what? I just I just realized, guys. Man, and apologies to everybody who's who's watching at home. Somehow, when we set up when I when I set up the the video, I set it to private initially, so it's not allowing the live comments uh, oh. <laughs> to, come, to come through. Oh well. Um, so unfortunately, uh, there will, doesn't look like we'll be able to get to any, uh, of the, of the viewers, um, comments and questions right now. So everybody who's watching, you know, apologies. Uh, I dropped the ball on that one. Who cares about the readers? That's what I always say. <laughs> forget the readers, forget the viewers. Uh, it's just us, uh, in here, in this room, in this house of nerd, um, yeah. So we're we're talk we're talking Newburn and uh, because because issue one comes out Wednesday you know most people haven't had the opportunity to to check it out yet uh, you know we were lucky enough to be able to read it fantastic first issue but I said to myself I said here I think here's a, a good opportunity to allow those maybe to get a, a um, more, more, more background information on on the character of Newburn, if you will. Bit of a surprise here for you guys. Uh, set up, set up a little game, Al, and let me know any mm-hmm. any, any moment when you're ready here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, always, always love that that back matter, that extra info on the characters, or at least I know I do. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> So, well, I'll, so, I'll say right off the bat, I can't give away too much because we're giving it away in the yeah. stories to come. But yeah, I, I, I try to limit it to nothing that's too, too spoilery. All right. Uh, All right. But, you know, the name of the game, pretty straightforward. Uh, who is Easton Newburn? Um, All right. So I'll ask a series of, of, of questions and, and okay. you fine gentlemen uh, can let us know. Which which way uh, perhaps Newburn uh, would be leaning towards in these in these scenarios? Uh, L, first slide, please, if you will. Uh, first question, you know, he he he's a he's a private private detective, a PI. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got to get his day started off, you know, on the right on the right footing here. So, what does Newburn eat for breakfast? I can you know, I can actually answer that. Yeah, because I, I have it in a script. Let me just let me try. Oh. Let me try and find it. <laughs> well, then. So forget uh, Al. Do you have? Do you have the? Uh, can we? Get right. the, uh, we got a couple here. Uh, All right, grapefruit and grape, grapefruit and yogurt is is the actual answer. But <laughs> so, so he's definitely not. He's definitely not corn pops. He's not. No, <laughs> I'm not a fan either. 
Okay. Definitely thumbs down a corn pop. We got, a, we got yeah. another option here. All corn right, another flakes. corn based product. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe one more option here. I don't know what we're looking at here, folks. Or Breakfast corn sausages. Wow. All right. We're corn? just going That's corn, corn on the cob. Okay. Classic corn on the cob. I guess it's going to be black coffee. You know what? I mean, uh, out of those, out of those three, it would probably be corn on the cob. But he would, um, he would, he would deliberately uh, take a, a meticulous knife and just shave the corn off. The, cor the kernels off, yeah. Because <laughs> he's not. I mean, uh, maybe it's also a personal preference of mine, but I absolutely detest corn on the cob. I think it's like it's it's too much work. Okay. For too little gain. And you always get that shit stuck between your teeth. And I'm like, why? What's the point? You can just Ooh. eat some corn. Just eat some corn. <laughs> okay. Why would you do that one? You can, you can have it in pulp form. <laughs> That's true. I, I will say, the um, uh, years ago, I went on a trip to Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. with my wife. Um, and uh, we went with some friends to a movie. Uh, first, the movie was heavily edited because of the region, which was very hilarious. Characters are going to kiss, and all of a sudden, it's the next scene. But um, wow. but instead of popcorn, they had regular corn. So you just get like a, a like a container of corn, like hot corn. <laughs> Do you eat it with your fingers? Wow! A little, little spoon, and but like, like, hear me out, hear me out. You got to put a little bit of butter on it. You got to okay. put like a little bit of spices on it. Yeah, yeah. What, whatever you wanted. They had all these toppings for the corn. Yeah, I guess. Mix it up. It was delicious. Yeah. I highly recommend going to a movie theater with just regular corn instead of popcorn. That sounds <laughs> better than popcorn. It, it, it is. It is. I gotta say, where was this? You said Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I quite right, loved so, it. Interesting. So, you're are, are you? I think you were leaning towards then New Bern is with a with a very sharp knife. Fruit. Perhaps. Yes. He's he's uh, he's fruit. He's, 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 he's well, the sharp knife. He's taking corn off the cob. I got. And you. then and then he'll you. eat them it, if it's between these three options. It yes. makes it makes sense. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You, very you good. Heard, you heard it, folks. Uh, next, next up, what do we have going on here? Uh, over or under? I think this one is is self-explanatory, but also very important here. Al, can we can we get that up here? Uh, what are yeah. we looking at here? Is New Bern an over or an under? <sighs> uh, Jacob, I'll defer to you on this one. <laughs> well, I think over is the only way any sane person would do it. Um, that is true. That is true. So I, I would imagine over. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely correct there. Um, I will say, though, um, uh, I visited my brother's house, and he was doing it under, and uh, I had to have words with him, obviously. Well, I assume, assume you never been back. <laughs> so, so you're but he, he, his reasoning actually made sense, because they have a cat. And if it's over, the cat is just going to play with just it. Un it, it yeah. Under, it won't do that. So that's the only reason Ooh. for that. I will say Newburn uses uh, neither. He has a bidet. Well, <laughs> there, there but, you go, Ferks. Uh, you, you heard it here first. Uh, it's Newburn, funny. User of bidets. Because my father is not a disciplinarian at all when I was a kid. And the only thing he ever did <laughs> confront me about is how I put the toilet paper on the wall. <laughs> wow, he had man. a very firm stance on that, though. Everything yeah. else he let fly, but that toilet paper had to be <laughs> had to sense. be put just the way he wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's important. I'd say it's a, it's a deal breaker uh, in any yeah. relationship, at least, at least with me. Uh, and, yeah. and I got to say, I'm pleased and relieved that Newburn is uh, is an over kind of guy. Um, yeah. I think the only acceptable answer here. Uh, That's true. Next, next, next slide here. What do we got going on here? Which film does Newburn like All to right. unwind with after uh, uh, you know a long day on the job? Yeah. He, he goes home, kicks back. What do we got here? What are the options, Al? Uh, we got Ghostbusters. Okay, not mm. too bad. We got Die Hard. Die Hard. It's a classic. Yeah. No, no. We got the Goonies. Okay. Huh? And then uh, I think we got one more here. Oh, maybe switch it up a little bit. Maybe he's a flash dance kind of guy. I don't know. Oh, this is this is yeah. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'd think it would be Die Hard, but um, but it's actually Flash Dance. <laughs> he likes he likes he likes the idea of someone you know uh, uh, starting at the bottom and 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 rising up uh, through the ranks, and and Flash Dance really epitomizes that. I think persevering. Perseverance, perseverance. 
I dig it. I dig buckets, it. Buckets of water. I it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Jake, Jacob doesn't look too impressed here. Would you concur, sir? Mm. Um, I quite like the idea of him being really into Ghostbusters. Okay. Like, <laughs> Just like super into it, like we, he, that's the only. <laughs> this is the thing, like, like he has that can, one room. Jacob the could easily yeah. he put in the, the background. Jacob could easily put in the background like a bunch of Ghostbusters DVDs in his place. <laughs> and I'll have no control over that. <laughs> well, the only thing I can do is just keep adding dialogue <laughs> until he has to cover it. So, so if, just have to stay the man through the window. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just peeking in. Yeah. So, so we may get a cameo uh, in, in, a, in a future yeah, yeah. Uh, issue. Okay. I'm looking forward to, to that potentially. Uh, I think we got maybe one or two more. Uh, what's right. going on here? What's up next here? Oh, who does Newburn listen to when he's trying to get his swole on here? Clearly, he's, uh, you know, He's hitting hitting the gym hard there, mm -hmm. trying to stay in shape. What are his options here? What are we looking at? Yeah. Uh, hey, Toronto boy Drake, potentially mm -hmm. maybe you know. Uh, mm -hmm. What else we yeah, have yeah. here? Dead mouse, high another, energy. Another Canadian. All right. Another Canadian. Got to show love to the Canadian boys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what else do we have here? Rush. Oh, uh, <sighs> Jacob. Jacob, you want to take this? I, I can't imagine him listening to any sort of popular music. Yeah, but yeah, maybe, yeah. like, I feel like he'd be more a classical man. Mm, um, this is true. Okay. But or, dead or, like, some, or some heavy death metal with flashing lights in the accountant. I will I will say, <laughs> uh, out, of, out, of, out of those three, uh, he appreciates Rush the most. Yeah. Okay. I can't yeah. be mad at that. I can't be yeah. mad at that. Rush, gym music. I dig it. Because it's like it's like math rock kind of like there's like prog rock like there's like there's it's almost like a puzzle. Rush is like a puzzle for him. Okay. He enjoys it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Some some background on, on Newburn here. Uh yeah. what else do we have here, L? Do we got another one here? Ah, the the classic. <laughs> Newburn's beverage of choice after a hard day of having guns pointed at his face. It's a rough line of work, clearly. Clearly. Uh Perhaps he's into a you know a tall pint of, of, of cold brew. I don't know what else do we have here or tequila. Maybe he's a tequila guy. Okay. Uh, or my personal favorite, a warm, frothy glass of, of milk at night to you know settle his, settle down. You know, mm -hmm. settle into the night. <laughs> Um, I will say out of all of those, it would be the first one, but only because the photo has a, a frosty mug of beer and then in the distance, another frosty mug of beer because he sets it up that way every night. <laughs> he has like a beer, but there's a beer at the other end that's just kind of waiting for him. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind. Hey, just just for gig, clearly, you know? Yeah. Uh, New York City, underworld, can't be easy. No. Uh, I think last one, L. We got one more. Hey. This is this is a House of Nerds show. We got, we got one question for the geeks: Is he a Superman or a Batman kind of guy? Uh, I don't think we need to consult on this one, do we, Jacob? <laughs> uh, he's, he's frozen. He's, uh, uh, he's uh, so uh, he's so <laughs> stunned at the audacity of this question. He's frozen. He couldn't, he couldn't believe it. Or or he's just pretending that he's frozen to avoid <laughs> yeah. answering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously he's going to go with the detective. Okay. Yeah. Which is Batman. <laughs> okay. Um, Superman, he feels, is just like a chump just waiting to be manipulated by him. Okay. Mm. That's that's the kind of guy oh. is. That's who we're dealing with. And maybe, yeah, okay. There we go. I, I think we got, we got a hot take from Chip on that about yeah. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not my opinion. Oh, okay, do, not confuse, okay. do not confuse the, the <laughs> artist with the art. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I dig it, I dig it. And, uh, you know, New Burn, mm. issue number one, coming out this Wednesday. Huh. Man, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, mm. but, but, Chip, that's, that's not your only, uh, that's not the only book you put, you know, your, your resume. Man, it's no joke. It is no joke. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to yeah. get, hopefully, Jacob back. Um, Joe, I, I believe you wanted to talk. We wanted to talk on. Uh, there was some some uh, 
his new one. I'm sorry, All Nighter. All Nighter. That's oh, yeah, out yeah. of wow. Comicsology right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yep. it's going to be in print from Dark Horse in February. Dark Horse, yeah. Oh, it yeah. is, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dark Horse has a deal with the Comicsology to put out the all the originals in print form. Yeah, yeah. I so like the collection. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. That cool. was fun. Some fantastic stuff. I got to say, uh, oh. just thoroughly enjoyed issue one and number two. Um, awesome. So I like to go into reading these books. You know, no synopsis, no no idea what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's starting off uh, another vampire tale. And then where you just took it, totally unexpected. Love the oh, awesome. twist. Love oh. the twist. <clears throat> Enjoyed it. And then you're working with uh, some fellow Torontonian uh, yeah. creators on this. You've got Yeah, Andrew. yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost almost an entirely Toronto crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason Liu is the artist. And um, back in the day, he used to be an assistant in uh, the studio I worked in. Um, but he went on and did his own comics. And they're just amazing. And we did uh, Afterlift with Comixology um, a couple years ago. And uh, that did really well for them. Uh, also came out through Dark Horse. And so we were just like, well, let's just keep this kind of the party going. And we, we worked on this together with, uh, yeah, the colorist is Toronto, Paris Alain. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Editor Allison is uh, Toronto. <coughs> the only one who isn't is uh, Aditya Bittakar, who's from India. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a Toronto crew through and through. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, nice. it's a lot of fun, and Comicsology is just kind of a great place to kind of try new things. Um, uh, I, 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 I like the speed of it, and um, and uh, yeah, I've got a fondness for the digital format, where it's just like, hey, here it is. It's mm -hmm. like you feel like Beyonce dropping an album, like it's just like, ta da! Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, here's the first two. Oh, here's another, number three. Like you could yeah, just yeah, press the uh, issue one and two dropped in the same week, right, on Comicsology. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, like, we've had them done for a while, because, again, yeah. Jason's very much like Jacob. He's super fast. Um, uh, so we got really ahead on it. Issue 5 was done, like, I want to say in the spring. And so it was just comics. I was like, okay, now we've, we've got them, and we just got to figure out when we want to put them out. Okay. And uh, and I pointed out to them that Halloween was coming up. And they're like, okay, let's put them out. I'm like, great, all right. <laughs> Boom, just like that. Uh, easy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I don't think people should sleep on these comicsology originals, man. Uh, you got uh, Jock and Lemire that just put out their Snow yep. Angels. You got Snyder who's putting out a bunch of stuff. Tons of stuff. Now yeah. this yeah. is your second book, I believe, right? You're, yeah, yeah. That's your second book on comicsology. So I mean, I mean, people shit on digital, but uh, it's it's what? it's who's, slowly who's gaining shitting on digital. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't run Twitter, man. It, it's funny. It's like I I only. I, for the most part, I only read comics digitally now. Yeah. Uh, mm. Mostly because I, I just can't handle holding the on space. to them. Yeah. Like, I, I was in a phase for a while where I, I would get the single issues mm -hmm. and I would just I would treat them like magazines. I would like, okay, they go out with recycling or I put them out on the curb when I'm done with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then that felt weird because they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm not a wealthy man. So like, like even, even like, like my bookshelf behind me like that's it. That's all I own, mm. well, which yeah. like um, makes me a rarity, I think, amongst comics people, <laughs> in terms of uh, how much uh, uh, they they have on their bookshelf. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, I'm a huge fan of digital. It cuts down less trees and <laughs> yeah, um, and eases up on the storage. But uh, but I get it. Like the, the the market is driven by you know, the print and speculators and variant covers and, yeah. and people who just really enjoy the, the feeling of the physical, like, you know, like yeah, I got my, but... I got my physical copies of Newburn right here. Yeah. They showed yeah, up right. and it, it's a very different feeling to have like the physical copy. It's like, Oh yeah, this is really cool. It's like a thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. digital, it's like we make the books digitally and then they show up somewhere digitally. It's like, that's it. Like it's the same as when I drew it. There's no yeah exciting new stage of it. Yeah. Especially now, people used to make like all oh, the art pops more on this or that, but I mean, three quarters of the art is done digi digitally now. Yeah. So there's no loss of quality if you're looking at a screen like because if you're going from a printed page, you have to scan it, so you know you, there's a loss. You know, each each process you lose a little bit, but you're going from digital to digital, so there's no loss of quality at all with the art. Well, or anything it's funny. Digital. I was gonna I was gonna ask Jacob because uh, he's a master of color. Do you color in RGB and convert to CMYK? Uh, no, I do it all in CMYK. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had a thing on, on sex criminals. I would do it in RGB. Um, it's tricky because, 
because I always I, I, I want it to be as vibrant as possible, like for a yeah. digital version down the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I convert to CMYK and be like, oh man, like all oh, these colors just died. Like it's, yeah. it's, so, <laughs> it's, so, it's so yeah. painful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I like that idea, the fact that like the digital versions are native digitally because you can get colors you can't get in print. That's why I asked school. Yeah. It was always Pentone, man. They always preach Pentone, pick colors off the Pentone chart. And... Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like being able to like, um, like work in like the percentages as well. Like, mm -hmm. do that choosing color that way, and that, like, I understand how that works in CMYK. Yeah. Whereas like, yeah, RGB is yeah. a bit, a bit more like you know, I don't really get what's what. So at okay. least with that, I can sort. And like. Um, when I color reckless and stuff like that, there's no black in any of the color. I always in any of it, so I can just go in and like take that out and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I, I prefer to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't like to mess around with it because otherwise I end up yeah like losing a color that I thought would look really good and then it doesn't. It's, yeah, it's it's funny. I've, I've just finished um, a Justice League <laughs> miniseries and uh, the colorist on that, uh, Anrika. There's a by the end of the series, it's like it's all Green Lanterns, like like there's Green Lantern constructs of all the Justice League, and there's all this Green Lantern stuff, and she's like, "Oh, you're killing me with this green," <laughs> <laughs> because it's like the hardest color to like get like a really good green in CMYK. So man, if that's the case, I gotta hand it to Jamal Campbell for Far Sector because I know he any, did anyone, a fantastic job on that. Yeah, yeah, anyone doing Green Lantern work is just like they're a hero yeah. in the coloring community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you, we're talking about you know like the digital art versus a little bit of of, of traditional. See, I, I I was man, I was really slow on on kind of reading the digital stuff. I'm an old school head. I just I like to have a, a physical yeah uh, copy in my hands. But I, I noticed with Jacob in particular, with where I really kind of seen the difference is in the second arc of that text is blood when you're switching up to traditional and the digital. I read the digital copy first, and and you could really see the difference in, in the time period. You're, you know, you're switching the styles, and I said, "Man, it's, it popped! It was gorgeous. The color palette, it, it the the past, like the 1980s uh, scenes, it almost had like a grainy, like a textured, yeah, look and feel to it. You know, and it, it really popped when I read it digitally. And then when I had it in my hands, the copy, it still looked fantastic." But I felt it kind of lost a little bit of, of yeah, that. definitely. Cause, yeah, because yeah. it's already got the paper texture there, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, it's hard to then put that <laughs> yeah. paper texture onto the paper texture. So it's yeah. like you do <laughs> sort of lose it. A bit. Um, mm. And then the blacks aren't the blacks and the eighty stuff aren't like true black as well. They're a bit mm -hmm. grayed off. But yeah. again, you can't really tell when it's printed because the blacks aren't like properly black on yeah. the paper yeah. anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So it is like it, it definitely, and because I'm doing it digitally as well, and that's how I'm looking at it. So I think it's like truer to what I was trying to do in the digital version. But then you get something else. I think it's like a different thing. Isn't it? Like the physical is like it's, it's like got a different feel yeah. to it. Anyway, it's it's nice to have both. I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so for I mean, right there, I said, man, you know, I really gotta, I need to start checking out books a little bit more often digitally, and and, and yeah, I find it just. It just it pop it pops more the art specifically yeah. uh, a bit and I, I love it especially you see those those tiny details you know like the textures yeah. and stuff uh it's great it's great stuff um, yeah so, sometimes that works against the artist too like I don't yeah? I never want somebody to zoom in on my work <laughs> yeah. because it, it's really it's drawn to be looked at at a certain size <laughs> yeah because you, you work bigger and it's it's shrunk well traditionally it's on a yeah. bigger page and it's shrunk down so you know yeah whenever well, you do that you, it's always fun to draw something, and then you shrink it down. And you're like, man, that looks five times better than when I drew. It. <laughs> one, of, I one, of the, one of the mistakes I made when I started drawing sex criminals was because um, I started to do that digitally. I would zoom in on the panels, and I would draw all the stuff. And then when uh, we we zoom back out, it's, I'm just like, why did I? Why did I do that? Like, you can't even yeah, make out any of the stuff. It, and also, it kind of looks bad because you don't have the like the balance of the page goes off because you're not looking at yeah. the page. I found like, I always... like, like the line weights are always wrong as well. I, yeah. I know uh, Tonshi only has it. So it's, you can only zoom in to like two different levels. So yeah. it's either like, it's either sort of like blown up to like, you know, uh, 150% or 
or it's print yep. size. So you can't go in and like do like new, so it stays like loose. Uh -huh. And that's what I yeah. do with, um, when I'm coloring, I don't zoom in like at all pretty much because I don't yeah. want to get, because a lot of it's all like, you know. You want that balance big, in the panel like, and the page. And yeah. It yeah. needs to be like, there's no, you know, once it's been flatted, I don't need to go in and I don't need to be all detailed. So I can just sort of like have it sort of print, pretty much print size on the screen and yeah. just do it like that. Um, yeah, that's that's the best way. Yeah, um, I don't have it quite set up like Tanchi does, but I, I I consciously make sure I only zoom in a certain amount. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I make sure to always be conscious of the the, the brush size. Like I never yeah. I never go bigger than a forty, and I never go smaller than a twenty. Yeah. Like I always make sure. Yeah, I have two. I have like two. When I'm inking, I have two <clears throat> sizes that I do. Yeah. So it's like having two pens, and then, uh, yeah. and then I use two pens when I do it traditionally. Traditionally, yeah, um, makes sense. Well, I use two pens, and then I use a brush pen for the blacks or whatever. But um, yeah. but yeah, with when I pencil, I I've, I've recently upped the size of my penciling brush, um, <laughs> which is like, you know. It's gone to like a twenty, a twenty-five or something. Because I was yeah. doing it at like twelve, and I was like, "No, this is this is all right." It was like a revelation for me. But cause I was because I was I was penciling tighter than I was inking. Yeah. So I, I was just doing all this stuff for no reason at all, and then I sort of when I'd ink it, I'd sort of be a bit disappointed that I didn't put all this. It doesn't look as sharp as it did in the pencils. In the pencils. So I, I blew up the the pencil size, and now I can. And now I'm not getting sort of like lost in detail that I don't need to put in. It's funny. I always feel like uh, you get the best work doing kind of one or the other, like tight pencils and loose inks or loose pencils and tight inks. Yeah. Right? Because like if you have the tight pencils, it's like, all right, you've got it all figured out. It's all laid out. It's kind of like you were saying with the flatter. Like you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. And then you can just be kind of really loose with the inks. Yeah. And like, I much prefer having tighter, tighter mm. pencils because it's much easier to figure things out in pencils. Yeah, like if I, I can't, have, I don't mm. want to have to figure anything out in the final thing that people are gonna see. Because yeah. uh, anyway, yesterday I did it yesterday because I'll get lazy and I won't pencil some things quite. Yep. <laughs> so I'll like, and yeah. I was, I had to draw like a rifle from like first person point of view, um, mm. like like an old rifle. Yeah, and I've got no idea what a rifle looks like. So like I was drawing, so I was sort of like I got like one reference photo from the wrong angle. Yeah, and I sort of like. I was just sort of like, oh, it, it still goes like that. And I got to the ink. <laughs> I was inking it yesterday, and I was like, this. I I finished the page. I was like, there's no way I'm putting this out like this. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it looks. I, it just look. It looks like nothing. Like it's just like a yeah, mess. Yeah. That I'm where I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out. It's so funny. I've I've done that so many times where I'm just like, I'll oh, figure. It. It, it's the equivalent of. I always hear the stories about the original Star Wars where George Lucas would be like, "We'll fix it in post." Mm. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, man, fix it now, fix it yeah. now, like, because I always. It's always, that. it's always like the last page of the day when I'm penciling. I'm like, oh, I can go as soon as I finish this. Yeah. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. And I'll, I'll fix it tomorrow. <sighs> then I just, you know, I never do. You're just creating so much more work for you down the yeah. line. I know. Yeah. It's a Which classic like a, mistake. Rather than do like a five minute, do five minutes longer, <clears throat> actually yeah. drawing it correctly the first time. It's funny. I, yeah, I screwed myself. I was just gonna say I screwed myself in a similar way with writing recently because the book I'm doing for Substack, Public Domain, I'm writing and drawing it. So I'm just like, well, great. I don't have to sit and write like these long scripts. Like all I got to do is like write kind of the basic thing and dialogue will come later and stuff. And so I kind of did like the chunk of the first issue that way. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go write the dialogue. And it took me so much longer to do the dialogue because I didn't just do it all in that first yeah. first bit. I'm like, oh, oh, but I actually need more space here for this. And oh, uh, uh, and I had to readjust the artwork and like, such a pain in the ass like just do all the work up front and it'll be a lot easier oh, yeah. yeah so chip we were talking uh substack you know it's uh yeah you know, been in the news uh quite a bit these days we got a lot of you know big big creators uh yeah uh putting out original works out there can can you um let us know a little bit of what's going on with your substack how it works what's going on over there all that good stuff yeah, I mean, for as little as an expensive cup of coffee a month, you can be part of zadarsky.substack.com. Um, and it's kind of an extension of the newsletter I've been doing for the past few years there, mm -hmm. where um, uh, if you kind of sign up, then you're, you're able to comment on stuff. You get the uh, newsletters that uh, the free subscribers don't get, um, where I kind of talk a bit more about process stuff and post 
original comic. So a series I did uh, at Image a few years ago, Captara, with local artist Kagan McLeod. We did like kind of one arc of it, and we've been meaning to kind of get back to it. And this was like perfect opportunity. So we've been doing new chapters of that oh, story, okay. wow. and uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm writing and drawing my first book since uh, since I finished drawing Sex Criminals, public domain which is about a, uh, a family um, where the dad uh, created like a superhero comic character in the 70s that is now like equivalent to the Marvel movies now. It's like the Ooh. biggest character in the world. Okay. And it's all about the sons and the family kind of reconciling with that and trying to get the rights back to the character so uh, the dad can get okay. paid. Um, so, it's, you know, it's a bit of a look at the industry <laughs> yeah. uh, through these characters. So, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm posting every two weeks I post... Uh, a new chapter of that story okay. and every other week a new chapter of Captara and we're also doing um we're doing variants special variants so this is the Newburn variant that I uh, I made Ooh, um, the red nice. is the red is a uh, 95 95 Jacob no, not 95 magenta <laughs> 95 yellow <laughs> um, great choice thank you uh, I don't cool. want to go 100 100 it feels a bit much but 95 95 um so so this is the kind of thing where like um, if you are uh, an annual subscriber, um, okay. you can order these online um, through my uh, uh, comic shop that's been helping me out, the Beguiling. Okay. Um, so yeah. through the subscriptions, if you subscribe for a full year, do you, is it does it come at a discounted price, or is it the yeah. same as if you sign up monthly? It's uh, 70 bucks for the year, and it's 7 bucks monthly, so you're saving money okay. there. And okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, th that level of subscribers, they can... Um, <clears throat> Like I said, they can, yeah, yeah, they 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 can they can uh, order the special variants. Um, if you're at the top level, which still kind of blows my mind, it's like a two hundred fifty dollar level. Like you get this variant and a black and white variant sent to you on the house. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing my first uh, Marvel variant for my upcoming event, Devil's Reign, okay. where cool. um, I, I illustrated a cover, and that's going to be available for purchase as well through the Substack. So yeah, I'm just kind of putting all my eggs in this basket because yeah. I like the idea of having this like weird little walled garden where people have to pay seven bucks a month if they want to yell at me. So basically, <laughs> basically the way you have it set up, you're putting out more or less a chapter every week for interchanging between two books. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of adds up to that. And one chapter I, equals to what? Maybe what uh, is it like a half depends. a comic, a full comic, or no, no, how many like, pages uh... is it? Uh, it depends on the scene. We're basically doing a scene a week. So sometimes, okay. like, you know, I broke down the new issue of Captara, and a lot of them are like three page scenes, and some are like okay. six page scenes. Um, and I, I do a lot of process stuff there, and I do, um, yeah, uh, like live Zoom things for the subscribers okay. as well, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, um, sketch giveaways. Oh, and okay. Yeah. And stuff. So, yeah. like, I'm trying to add as much to it as yeah. I can. Yeah. Well, it's, to, it's, just good to know because you know you know how it is on twitter people are just it went on fire when all the you big names started going on the sub stack oh, and you had the two you know the two clans from each oh, side what like you know so it, it's just nice to get a little clarification so people actually well i can, mean the, can, the, the beauty of it is out of their ass the beauty you know? of it like, is if you don't want to pay don't pay if you don't yeah, want the yeah. stuff you don't have to get it like no one mm -hmm. No one's mm -hmm. forcing anyone. I mean, it, no, it gets a little it sure. gets a little tricky in the comics community because there's a um, some of the readers are um, obsessive. And, uh, um, and that's a polite and, way to put it. Yeah, that's no, but like you know, like... they 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 want to be able to get everything from a creator. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so if there's a thing that they don't want to pay for, they don't want a part of, but their yeah. collection will be incomplete. It's like it does short circuit a little. Uh, it, it but brains. A lot of the Substack guys have said they're going to eventually put all this content out physically through, yeah, if they it can get be, deals be, with Image or other companies or self-published or yeah, it would be crazy to not like if you're producing original work digitally, like why yeah. would you also not make that available in print unless the print mm -hmm. industry collapses and because we can't get enough paper or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a possibility. Yeah. I can't say for certain Man. that you know these these uh, will see print. But it's like a ninety-five mm -hmm. percent thing, okay. right? Okay. Huh, nice. Yeah. 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 The, the big thing is like it's just it's going to be a while because you know we want to be able to put this out through Substack. We don't want people to feel like, oh, you're selling issue one the same week that you're putting issue one online. Like, why am I doing this? Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. The the format 
you know, you got to make it's got to make sense for everyone involved, yourself, the yeah. consumers. You know, you do, you don't want to jade one side to satisfy the other. You know, so yeah. it's got to be it definitely got to be a balance there somewhere. Yeah, for me, it's just been satisfying um, being able to do something in real time. Right, like like putting up pages as I'm doing them. Yeah, uh, like you were saying like, before, like you know, like, like, like dropping an album, you know, like yeah, <laughs> like you know, Jacob and I have been working on Newburn for like a couple of years, almost. <laughs> like it feels like yeah. a, at least a year and a half, yeah. and it's very weird to have like so many issues done and no one's even read issue one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so with this, it's like, oh no, as soon as I do a page, I can post it online. That's mm. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I do I do enjoy it for sure. Yeah. So yeah, Chip, it's fun to share share stuff with people, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Chip's got the Substack. Jacob, do you have a, a Substack? Or I know you've got the um. Yeah, the, the Patreon, um, the Patreon yeah. with uh, with Chris. Yeah, because yeah. that started off as doing like a like a a sort of short chapter online comic thing that we were doing because of lockdown and everything. You know, image didn't know what was happening with image. Texas Blood issue one got pushed. Mm -hmm. Only a month yeah. in the end, we, we thought it would, might be pushed for you know indefinitely. Yeah. Um, so we were doing these sort of I don't know how long they were eight page chapters, which would go up every month or two weeks. I can't remember what we were doing, but um, and then everything started up again. And I had to go back to drawing Texas Blood, so <laughs> we stopped doing that because I, I don't need a third book. But um, yeah. So we, now we do like it's yeah like newsletters and Chris does like a podcast uh, yeah. where he gets people on and uh, like loads of behind the scenes stuff. We do like a, you know send out like a mini print every month to like the you know the ten ten dollar people and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, so it's just like well, yeah, it's, like, it's just like another yeah, yeah. There you go, yeah, yeah, love uh, it. That was that's yeah. probably my favorite one. That took me so long to do though. That's the thing, like, it's great. Luckily, Chris pretty much runs it, and I haven't got to do anything. So, like, but every month I've got to supply him with, like, a little print. So, yeah. you know, and that's hard work, just getting it done. So, like, I think that one was, like, a month late getting out. Okay. Because I, but, because I was rushing to finish an issue. Well worth it. And I got to say, to anybody who's not already subscribed to the, to the Patreon, uh, man, to get even something like... This has got to be probably one of the coolest... Just things in my nerd collection. Uh, awesome. Love it, man. Love it, love it, love it. Um, well, I think we're going to do a, an 80s Joe Bob one as a book plate for oh, nice. um, for the second trade. We're going to do the, uh, like, if a shop orders enough, they can get the book plate sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. smart. So I think we're going to do, like, the 80s version of, of, of the Joe Bob toy for... Um, for that, so that was pretty fun. But yeah, that was really fun it. to do. And just doing like all all the design stuff, like painting the actual figure wasn't very fun. But like doing all the like graphics for it, and like I made like the um, like the price tag has got like a little like Ambrose Toys logo yeah. on it and stuff, and That's like fun. all that kind of. And like the little like free casserole uh, dish yeah. if you if you buy the toy or whatever, um, awesome. like stuff like that was really fun to do. Yeah. For sure. um, just, but yeah, the actual like, I did that just because it was fun, and then I had to actually paint the little figure, and that took me like a month. To, not to, as fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, but, um, yeah, it's it's quite nice just to have like extra stuff for the people that want it. And now, like yeah. Chris has started doing Brutal Dark as like a serialized like prose story, mm -hmm. so you can get like a chapter a month. I think he's doing. That's um, great. So and just first, like stuff like that, just like just dropped. Is that right? Uh, Jacob? Yeah, yeah. It came out like yeah. I think he put it up the other day, didn't he? Okay. Um, so yeah, so it was just like stuff like that, and like yeah, I've started doing a newsletter on there as of two weeks ago. I think I did my first one, so I'm going to do like a monthly one. So Chris does one every month, and then we've got the one in the back of the book. But so Chris does one every month, and then I'll do one two weeks later. Yeah. Um, and just like just general updates, and like I was doing like videos, like when I color. Uh, I'll do like a you know screen recording, like put videos and stuff like that up. So it's um, yeah, it's nice just to like have somewhere to put this extra stuff that people obviously like, that's sure. the kind of stuff that I love as well. Like yeah. seeing how things are done. So it's it's nice to have somewhere to put that. I can tell you as readers, as fans, man. I think just all this extra bonus content, the behind the scenes stuff, 
it's the best, man. You know, when you're really into a book, into a creator, into their works, getting all this this kind of <coughs> stuff, man, it's just like it's the tits. I love it, yeah. man. You know, yeah. well, that's what we fun. did. Like we did the um, the tote bag. So, because mm -hmm. I designed like the sort of like county insignia kind of thing, mm -hmm. I just wanted to use because that was just like a fun thing to do. Like yeah. it's all part of that like world built like world building stuff. So, like we put great. it on a tote bag and like yeah, you know, put it on a sticker and stuff like that. Because like, that, nice. that's the kind of I, like I don't really want to just have you know stuff with like a picture of the character on it. I like stuff that's like you know if you know you know sort of thing. yeah. Like, it's yeah. not yeah. like a Look at me! I'm reading this book. It's more like a, just like a cool thing. Yeah, there. like 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 when when we go to sell Newburn plush corns of cob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, with that. A hundred percent. Chip, yeah. where is that going to be available through Substack? Or oh, yeah, it'll be in <laughs> it'll be in toy shops everywhere. Oh, comic shops. Even better. Corn Even of better. the cobs. Yeah. <clears throat> wide wide distribution. I love it, man. People who know will know, you know. <laughs> I, you know dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. And, and, and while I got you on here, Jacob, just quickly before before you guys get out of here, I gotta put some pressure on you, Jacob. Ooh. Those the the, the t-shirts for that Texas blood. Mm. You gotta put them back up on the shop. The the rattlers and and all that stuff. The baseball tee. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Man, come on, good. Jacob. What's wrong with you? We did we did them and um, no one bought them. Like we didn't sell it. We didn't sell enough to yeah, yeah. to uh, warrant okay. making it. Because again, that was like mm -hmm. I just want that, you know, for yeah. me. I love but it. Yeah. It was just so expensive, and I oh, was like, man. I I thought everyone would really like it, and then everyone did, okay. and then no one bought one. Okay. Yeah, it's, that the classic, yeah. it's the classic thing of like everyone like, uh, you know, before I released any original artwork for sale, everyone was like messaging me like, when are you when are you putting artwork out? When are you putting artwork? Out? And then. <laughs> None of them bought it. Like people have bought it, but none of those people have bought it. So yeah. it's like, um, yeah. yeah, people want the option to buy it, but yeah. not to actually buy it. Yeah. That happened to us on Sex Criminals. We did like a uh, people wanted t shirt so we did a t shirt of like this kind of fun background character, Sexual Gary, mm -hmm. and uh, and we were super excited and it looked really good. We put it out there, and um, every time we get an image royalty statement. There's like a big chunk of red on it, and that red is the shirt. It's like it's costing us every year just to store these shirts somewhere. That's crazy. Oh, what I, yeah. what I did get done though. Hold on. Um, All right. So for uh, doing for like cons and stuff, and like sending out comps like from that I sell online, I got a Texas Blood one. I also got this. I got a New Burn stamp. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, very cool. So I got that one and, and like a Texas Blood logo one as well for like, yeah, putting on like the envelopes and stuff when I send out. That's cool. That's ah, super like that. cool. Um, nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So fingers crossed, we get some some new burn uh, merch, new burn gear. Uh, you know. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what there is a new burn we can turn into merch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out on yeah, the yeah. Awesome Nerd Show. Uh, it was great talking to you, gents. Uh, Chip, you're coming from uh, Toronto. Yep. Okay? So you're in Eastern time. Get yep. to enjoy the rest of the Sunday. Uh, Jacob, you know, you had a you had a long night apparently. So I guess rest up there. You're back. You're in the studio. Back to work. So, yeah. No, yeah. It's no, now no just gone four. So I'll probably yeah. do okay. another hour. Then I'm gonna go home. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, paid, we appreciate appreciate so much you guys coming out, hanging out with us, man. Uh, yeah. Newburn issue number one out this Wednesday, November third. Everybody needs to go out and cop it. Fantastic, fantastic uh, issue number one. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. And uh, you know, hopefully, back again uh, in the in the future. Cool. All Enjoy. right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys. All, All right. right. You as well. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. There you have it, folks. <clears throat> there you have it. Uh, Newburn creators Chip Sadarsky and Jacob Phillips. Man, uh, that was great. I got to say, man, I, I, I dropped the ball. And I don't know what's going on with, with the – I set the comments to private or I don't know what, man. I know I'm sure uh, I had a lot of people wanting to, to ask questions. Uh, so apologies. I'll get that sorted out for, 
for the next next creator. Uh, hopefully, man. But hey, we got we got we got more show for you guys today. It's not it's not over. Um, what do we have coming up, El? Oh, we have a weekend review. Okay. Okay. If I can. Yeah, I wanted to say something to you at the beginning, but because I noticed oh, that the comments were popping up, and I'm like, I don't know when to interject. <laughs> and, and and I should have I should have caught it because normally people There's are a bunch people of are in, yeah before the off. show even gets started. Yeah. Uh, the nerves the nerves got to me. I wasn't even paying attention to the comment section. So again, guys, uh, man, one uh, second. sincerest apologies. I'm not sure what happened there. I have to look into that. Um, but you know, we had a good time with with, with Chip and, and Jacob, man. Uh, and 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 with all sincerity, man, you burn you burn number one, guys, is a dope, dope uh debut issue. Um, if you're into like uh that kind of which is it's got a pulpy feel to it, you know, noir yeah. detective, you yeah. know, set in the you know, uh back with a backdrop of New York City. Um and just uh just great stuff and looking for I mean I've I've read New Bern a couple of weeks ago now, so I got that long wait to number two, man. It's gonna kill me, but uh, you know, it'll be worth it, guys. Um, what do we got here? Is it weekend review? Mm -hmm. So you know, if, if you guys are new to the show, if you've you know been here for come and hang out with us uh, for a while now, weekend review, pretty straightforward. We are talking about uh, our favorite books of the of the week, our favorite reads of the week. And uh, we're going to kick it off, I believe, with uh, Joe. Joe, what's going on, my man? What did you All read? Right. Week? Yeah, we're going to uh, get some comic talks, bud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't read week to week or month to month. I usually, mm -hmm. like, you know me, I'll read maybe issue one and I'll I'll collect a few issues and I'll binge read. Yeah. So I don't do week to week. So I'll, I'm going to change it up for myself. My top three are going to be trades. Okay. So I'm going to go with one old school and two new trades that just dropped recently. So if, uh, if people missed it, so this will be like a top three, you might've missed this. Mm. So, uh, they should go pick it up in trade form if they missed it when it came out in floppies. All right, let's so do I it. figured today's Halloween. So why not kick it off with an old school book from a couple years ago called count Crawley from dark horse. Uh, basically this book is a, uh, a woman who's an alcoholic who uh, lost her job. Uh, she's in the dumps and uh, she's, she's burnt a lot of bridges and she doesn't have too many options left. So she takes over this uh, cable public access show uh, late night, uh, kind of like an Elvira Sven Gulli, kind of a late night horror uh, public access show. And uh, when she takes over this job, uh, uh, she doesn't realize that the mantle of Count Crowling entails more than just uh, presenting uh, these campy, cheesy B-movies uh, late at night on a Friday or Saturday night. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of supernatural elements to this book. And uh, and the character herself is uh, just a great character, you know, uh, very relatable, uh, you know, just like you and me, you know, we problems, how you how you resolve those problems and, yeah. and how the weight of your decisions can come back and uh, weigh heavily on you. So, I mean, it's fun. It's campy. Uh, it, it's a really fun book. Uh, I'll go through the credits here. Uh, the writer, a lot of you may know the writer. He's uh, David Dast Malchin. Uh, you guys may know him better as Polka Dot Man from uh, Suicide Squad or, uh, oh, okay. or Peter, Peter DeVries from Dune. He just uh, played a role in Dune. Well, he's the writer of this book. And it just got announced a couple, maybe two months ago, that the, the second arc will be dropping in, I think, 2022. So he's going to continue the story in 2022 through Dark Horse. I so thought I this, recognized the name. Yeah, said, this guy's a big that? nerd. He's a super nerd, man. And he, this is Ooh. his comic. And it's okay. really good, man. Really good. Uh, okay. The art is done by Lucas Kettner. And the mm -hmm. colors are done by Lauren Affey. So, okay. I, I mean, if you want a good Halloween read that's not, you know, that's fun, entertaining, mm -hmm. then definitely check this out, man. Yeah. And if you're a big fan of Polka Dot Man from Suicide Squad, He's the writer, so man, go check cool. this book out. Yeah, yeah, great when, book. When, when did this come out, Joe? Uh, close to two years ago now. Oh, it, okay. it it came out in the fall, right before the pandemic started. Mm. And you so, said like November, okay. October, November, he dropped it like right around Halloween, the first issue. Yeah. So yeah. it I it might have got its last issue out right before the pandemic hit and okay. shut everything down. Okay. Yeah. 
That's yeah. interesting. I'm always, yeah. I mean, you know, you, with, with him being, you know, his background, uh, an actor, uh, mm -hmm. curious to see how, how, you know, his those translate to writing a comic book. So uh, uh, he did a fantastic job. Yeah. I, I like, yeah, I really like I the art and the interiors. I really like them. Yeah, that's really solid. Like this book from front nice. to back. Okay. Super solid. Art, writing, everything's good in it. Yeah. Not too uh, bad. Yeah. My second pick will be uh I've praised this show this online on our show. I've 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 praised this book up and down, yeah. yelled from the rooftops. Well, the trade just dropped, I think last week or the week before. So this is Ultra Mega. It's an image book. Uh Written and drawn by James Heron. Uh, you may know James Heron from his previous work on Rumble, which was written by John Acruti, who was also the writer of Two Moons. Mm. So he did Rumble with John Acruti. That was his previous work with Image. And now just last year, he put out this, Ultra Mega. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the colors are done by Dave Stewart. So like the art and the colors in this are top notch. They're fantastic. It's got definitely got a gritty kind of 90s feel to it, to the art. And uh, man, the story, like, I never thought I'd, I'm not a big kaiju fan. And, you know, like, so I was on the fence about getting this, picking this oh, book Oh, it is, up, it is a kaiju book, eh? It's a kaiju, but it's got, I'd say it's more of a horror book than a kaiju book. Okay. So if you no, dig no. horror, so let, this is another kind of Halloween pick here, Ultra Mega. It's got okay. heavy horror vibes to it. Yeah. Like, and, really? the, and it's, and it's mm. fun. Okay. It's fun. It's action packed. It's fast paced. It's dark. It's grim. It's a really great book. Uh, like I highly like anyone who likes dark, gritty action and horror. It's got all that. It's okay. it's amazing. It's a really fun book. And he, this is uh, he. Every issue was about like forty eight to sixty pages. Ooh. Yeah, they're all and, he, and it came fast. out. It came out in four. Yeah, it came out in mm -hmm. four issues. So this is a pretty thick uh, trade, man. Yeah. So if you, it, it's a hefty first trade so you're going to get a lot of a lot of bang for your buck with this one nice so this nice. is a great book i i highly recommend to anyone for and sure. my last pick will be that the trade just dropped last week and it was a long wait because this was uh mm -hmm. far sector mm -hmm. this was a young animals from the young animals imprint in dc mm -hmm. and this was released bi-monthly okay. so this this series has been going on for two years wow and with the pandemic it took a little hiatus so probably longer than two years uh so now it it finished up its run and now the trade just dropped last week. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I am not a Green Lantern fan, but this book just got me not maybe didn't make me a Green Lantern fan, but I'm a Joe Mullen fan. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's the character. That's the main character that you follow. She's a Green Lantern. Yeah. And this is written by a, an acclaimed novelist, uh N NK Jameson. She she came on to write this and she does a fantastic job uh with the uh, with Joe's character, like she, you know, I don't know. I, I dig characters that are affable, you know, like, like they're superheroes. They got all these powers, but they have everyday problems like you and I, you know, like mm. in their relationships in their everyday lives, their love lives. I mean, Ooh, so not only do they have to go and kick ass, but when they're yeah. not kicking ass, they got to deal with the, with the everydays in and outs like you and I have like what life, the shit life throws at you, you know? Hey. This this page right here just told me to check that out. That's some cr the that's colors. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm getting to that. The art is man. done by Jamal Campbell, man. <laughs> Whoa. The art is done. Yeah, done by yeah. Jamal Campbell, who also did uh, Naomi. If you've read that, it's the yeah. same artist as Naomi. So this okay. this is a Canadian boy, and he does everything. He does the colors, and his color palette in this is just oh, it's so nice. Whoa. And his yeah. art reflects, I think, the character perfectly because. Joe's a badass, but she's also like she's got a softer side, a more vulnerable side. And like his colors complement like the scenes. Like it'll be quiet, more subdued, more welcoming. And then bang, they'll pop and have energy when she's like, you know, it, it fits, it fits the mood perfectly and it okay. it reflects the character. Like like Jameson and Campbell together on this were like uh awesome team like a dream team so yeah. this just came out last week so if you guys want to get a good like an amazing green lantern story yeah and even if you're not a green lantern fan i say pick mm -hmm. this up because i'm not a green lantern fan and mm -hmm. i love this book and it was great okay man i mean just on the strength of the art i'm gonna have to check that out mm -hmm. that's that's crazy hey real quick 
who was in charge of scrubbing the uh the tax the diamond? Oh, I knew you were gonna bring that yeah. up. And that Joe, Joey, Joey, Joey no, please submitted. Yeah, he he did it for me. So if you mm. wanna you know Okay, that's 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 good because I see there we got a little bit of our uh, action going on in the dial. Mm -hmm. That's not spoilery, eh? Oh, it is definitely because right. right before this the grunts, you gotta leave the grunts, man. Oh, the grunts. <laughs> man, the grunt, the grunts. <laughs> Be some of the most spoilery stuff. Okay, so but that's that's Joe, eh? That's that's, all, that's yeah. all Joe. Okay, yeah. can't take credit no. for that one. Okay, no. okay. I gotta I leave the grunts, man. Two weeks, two infractions in a row there. Also. No, uh, no, I'm I'm a big know. fan of leaving the grunts. You gotta okay. leave some lettering. You know, there's 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 more to a comic than just the story and the art. The lettering is very important too. So I like and to who, leave a little bit of lettering. The, who did the where lettering I can. for that? R. Who did uh, that? I don't know. Mm. I'm just kidding. That's the problem. <laughs> my my singles are in the box, and when you go online and click, they never give the letter credits oh, in the man. fucking on Google or anything, man. Like you yeah. go on Comixology, it's writer artists. Mm -hmm. Often the colorist isn't listed, the letters aren't listed. So man, mm -hmm. all you people out there like Google Books and all that, get your shit together, man. Put the credits out properly, you know? Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. I've come. I've been one of those guys. I've really come to appreciate a good letter recently, like Hassan Otsami. Mm -hmm. Whoa, killer, killer! I love his like yeah. experimental. He really yeah. pushes the boundaries when it comes to the lettering game, and like any any book that he letters, I'll pretty much I'll check it out. Like oh, for sure. when I could never have said that in the past before that oh the the letter is on this book. Okay, let me check it out. I mean, he's that good. So yeah. anybody who might not be familiar with his work, uh, yeah. you know, he's, he does a lot of, I, I think, Aftershock. I, I guess he's all over the place, eh? Good I letters think. will write, like, yeah. almost every book you see, every other book. Crazy. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's my top three of things you okay. may have missed that deserves okay. your attention. I dig that, man. Not too shabby. Trades, okay. Uh, I'm going to check out Fire Sector, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely do it, man. I cool. think you'll enjoy it. Right on. Thanks, buddy. Who's up next? Oh, is that uh, you? Yeah, is that me? Oh, whoops! There's a more slide, a little bonus content oh, for, okay. for Joe. We got we got more slides here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so I guess we're doing the the bottom right, right, Joe, right, Sergio. We're doing the uh, bottom three. <laughs> well, listen, Al. Last week, last doing... <laughs> week, your first pick was your number three. You're like, this isn't really good. Right off the bat, you said your third pick wasn't good. So I was like, oh, so I guess we're doing a bottom three here. <laughs> oh, is that what I said? <laughs> yeah, you right off, you, you kind of dissed your first pick. So I was like, oh, oh so no. Was See, it was Eat the Rich. And and with Eat the Rich, it's not that it's – it was just at, to that point, the series wasn't my cup of tea necessarily. But number three – not it was in now. your number three slot, so I was no, just no, like no. bottom three. With the third issue, though, it really <laughs> – Okay. Okay. So my – Number three pick is Dark Blood. Number four. Mm, okay. Um, that's, that's a Black Caravan Scout? No, boom. it's Boom. That's Boom? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Latoya Morgan. She's a... Um, okay. She, I think she's you, traditionally a screenwriter. Like, she uh, wrote for Walking Dead and oh, shit. Parenthood and some other stuff. Okay. And... um. So it, it at the, it's about uh before during and after uh like a variance, so there was like this event and it changed some people into being powered, mm -hmm. and so it takes place during like World War Two, mm. uh, in like the fifties or sixties, and then like right before the like the day of the variance, so it has like a lot of like racial themes and just showing that like doesn't really matter the time period people are going to suck so um <laughs> and even you know people that you know you call your neighbors people who are supposed to be your enemies like uh you know what i mean so it really explores those themes so it's a solid book i don't really see a lot of people talking about it often oh. so there's a shot uh, of a rifle that Jacob could have used as reference. Mm. Is that a rifle? <laughs> I don't know. A double barrel shot. Looks like it. Yeah. Mm. See, I would have to Google too because I'm not. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> My second to the bottom 
is sweet paprika. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We got it. You know. Hey. <laughs> sweet paprika. Man, I, I love four. I love these covers, eh? Sweet paprika. They're they're just hilarious, man. Well, what better place to rest yeah. your boobs than on your boyfriend's <laughs> forehead, right? Yeah. I mean. Who needs who needs a bra? Who needs a yeah. bra when you got your boyfriend's forehead there? Hey, am I the only one who can't pronounce paprika? 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 I, I stumble. On Possibly. That I, Possibly. I, Papri paprika. Now I'm questioning how I say it. Yeah? <laughs> paprika. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Little so paprika. The story is basically she's like an executive. Um, she's high ranking. She's super uptight. She doesn't know how to let loose, but it's because her father, who's a judge has instilled in her that any kind of like devil like the world is like devils and, and angels, angels. Yeah. and so she's a devil but her dad has instilled in her that if you act like a devil then it's like the worst thing you could do because you're basically telling people like yeah like i'm <laughs> i'm bad like nothing i can so she's like very uptight she's very like type a and so like her she's like she just snaps like she her it's it's so funny every issue when she does finally lose her temper and um so at this point of the book she's like she's trying to seduce somebody but she's not very sexual outwardly Ooh. inwardly yeah. she's um a mess she, <laughs> like she's fantasizing every other page about something but she yeah. never actually acts on it and so this was probably one of the better pages in yeah. the book but yeah, this is like, it's all hey. fantasy. And then you have like her oh. dad, you know, in her fantasy, her dad like invades her fantasies and even ruins those for her. I, I feel I feel like this is this, what's going on here? What happened? What, what you mean what happened? What's, what's, <laughs> hey, hey. The, you told me to scrub, I scrubbed. Man, <laughs> at, at least you could have gotten like the, the, the good, at, I mean, okay. All right. You should have flipped uh, the flipped the face. What, what's what's going on here? Am I covering up her her her? She. Uh, oh, she is being fondled. Oh. Quite aggressively. Oh, I see. And okay. and on the right, right side is her dad invading her fantasy because well, in, even in her fantasy she can't escape her relax father's enough, wrath. Yeah. yeah. To, okay. So is this, judging is eyes. This, is this uh? Is this? This is not Photoshop, is it? Because am I no, making an appearance and I don't is, even know? Yeah, you should be getting checks. I was gonna you say, should. where's my royalty checks, man? Hey, that's one good looking guy right there. <laughs> no, that is one good looking guy. I gotta say, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I, I like this book already. This is yeah. issue four. <laughs> yes, yeah, number four. I'm gonna go out and cop this bad boy. Hey, everybody, uh, <laughs> go out and cop sweet paprika, paprika, paprika. Issue paprika. number four. Uh, Image Man, comics. obviously, clearly, clearly, good, good great content up in <laughs> Ian, there. Ian said, <laughs> Ian said she's a bit hairy down there, and and I can see I should have maybe flipped Sergio's what? head upside down for that one. Yeah, okay, we're taking it back, <laughs> 70s style, or yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but hey, that that looks like a lot of fun. I have I, I take no issues Actually. at all with with uh, with the placement there. And it's you know Merca and Dolfo, so it's it's really tongue in cheek. It's really like I laugh when I read this series, yeah. okay. but it also has like a lot of heart. Yeah. Okay, you got me. You got me. That's and there's cool. some shadow penises. Shadow penises. Okay. Yeah. You get little All right. illusions. All righty. Shadow penises. Uh, if that's not a reason to go out and grab this book, <laughs> I don't know what is really. Is that was that your number? That was your number two, L. Yeah, my number my number one was uh co-opted by you know somebody oh. else. Oh, are we getting into that already? Uh, no, not yet. So mm, my number okay. one will be saved for mm. after you know ah, later. Yeah. Okay. I see. <laughs> I see. Alrighty. Alrighty. So you got a top two this week with the uh, number one in waiting. And okay. uh, we have Sergio. I I ethically can't say that it's the bottom. Because the your picks were also picks that I didn't want to copy. You know, I'm so used to just you know going off of your picks that you know I decided to. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So you ready? I'm ready, man. Okay. I'm ready. Hey, my picks are on point. My picks are on point. My number three this week that Texas Blood number eleven. 
listen, at this point, I don't know what else to say about this book, man. If you guys aren't picking up uh, this, uh, you know, Jacob Phillips we just had on. Uh, he's on interior art. We got Chris Condon. Um, this book is is my favorite book out. Um, and uh, it's just, it's honestly, man, it's, it's, it's fantastic comic book reading, top tier reading. Uh, at this point, I don't. Again, I don't know what else to say. Chris, Chris, Chris Condon is like, he is the master of of like pacing, man, mm -hmm. and, and just setting the mood and setting the vibe. Um, you know, we were talking the other day, L. There's a lot of a lot of dialogue mm -hmm. uh, in this series, uh, not just in this issue, but in this series. But every single word, it works, man. Not a single word is wasted. You know, no. uh, it just it helps to build this whole this whole story and atmosphere um yeah i was saying yeah. like that's what takes you that's what makes me upset about the series is because it is so atmospheric and even with you know the words and stuff you get so invested so quickly it draws you in and you know uh, and then by the time you know you're ready for something to happen it's like next issue boom yeah so second arc we've been building up uh there's a girl missing uh i want that child already we got uh, Joe Bob back in the '80s on the case, along with um, uh, oh shoot, what's this guy's name? Eversol. Eversol, yeah. Who, who's by the way? He's a fantastic character. Oh uh, yeah, like I could I see love him Eversol. on screen. Like I could see this playing out cinematically. Hey, so right? such a good character. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd go. I'd love to see like uh, um, HBO Max, maybe. No, what's the? Uh, I always That's forget this word, man. A spinoff. Of... Spinoff. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. A spinoff. Especially spin because he's so eclectic. Like you really don't know if he's being straight with anybody, and just all of his past adventures. Like I think that would be super interesting. Absolutely. You know? He's got kind of like a slightly kooky vibe to him. You know what I mean? So I feel like be a, a series with him would work great. Uh, so this issue, second arc, has been kind of building, 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 and then this just takes off uh, issue number 11 with the action and uh, the, I think things are coming to a head hundred percent. I think the trades for this are pretty hefty too. Doesn't it run six issue trades this or the first, not mistaken? The, first the first trade was six issues. Yep. Six issues. So you're getting yep. a lot of story for per trade. If, mm -hmm. if people haven't read it and they want to go pick up the trades, you're going to be getting a pretty, pretty, yep. pretty hefty story yep. uh, in the first volume. Yep. And, and and Jacob Phillips somehow manages to in the second arc and issue by issue, man, he just elevates his game. I gotta say, uh, just fantastic stuff, man. Like, just pick it up. You know, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not reading this. But put to put it blunt, man, just a fantastic book. Um, and I think the trade really for the first first arc has been out for a bit, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The first yeah, volume I say has been out for like a good, I want to oh, say yeah. six months or something. I was, I was gonna say, yeah, I was thinking yeah. six months. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And so. that was like a straight read through for me. Like I didn't take any breaks. I just read it. It's a, it reads so good, like so as a good. whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As good as it is, issue. That's the beauty about that Texas blood. That's a good point, eh? Because the way the way it's written, the way it's paced, it reads very well month to month right which isn't always the case with like uh with the single floppies right um so it works fantastically month to month but it works just as good if not better in trade format mm -hmm. uh you know so uh you know that's not always the case you know what you know usually or at least my my experience of uh, books either you know works as a trade only or you know more, better month to month and usually not both so uh yeah man go out and cop that texas blood chris con and jacob phillips good stuff mm -hmm. now my number one of my two picks uh l what's what's your number one is what's your number two pick uh the all-nighter mm. so what is on. my number one and two so, pick well no you're same. number one and two but my, same as my my number one number and uh and listen i got receipts i told you I told you this was going to be my number one, my number two pick. So who put you yeah. on to the book who put, originally? Who put you on? Mm. Who put you on to the book originally? I don't know about that. Was it you? <laughs> it wouldn't have been in your top at all if you didn't know about it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, but, man, 
You know, I love I've had this, stuff, man. I've had this pre-ordered for two, uh, a little over a month now, because I think it was last month or the months before solicits in the previews for. Dark yeah, I Horses. think it's FOC is Monday. For, yeah, the, for, the, for, for the physical copies, for the yeah. it comes oh, okay. out in February. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Al, why, why don't you let us know why? I mean, it's a dope book. So outside of it being a cool book, the, the comiXology originals, like the experience when you're reading them is so unique because it's immersive. So like when you slide the page or, you know, you go to the next page, even the transitions, like they can utilize blank spaces, negative space mm -hmm. to add to like the suspense of like what's about to happen. And I think this Outrider and also in their other book, Afterlift, oh man, just that experience of not knowing what's about to happen. And because, you know, if you're reading it in, on paper, the double pages, you know, your, your, your eyes are going to wander, wander, you know, over to the next page. So you kind of have an yeah. idea of what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you read these comicsology originals and then you just have no idea what's about to show and then it's like a black space. I'm like, oh, was that it? And then you swipe again and it's it's just a whole experience. But yeah, yeah. the all nighter, it's about a diner that's only open at night for reasons. Mm -hmm. Did you want to finish? Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> hey, hey. I, I yeah, want to hear your It's about a diner. It's a top three, not else. <laughs> I want to know why you copied my pick. So why is it good to you? Oh, I love the yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, the there's like a a woman who's like she was turned when she was a kid, mm. or well, mm. they're vampires. So let me put that yeah. out there. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you know, it's in the synopsis, so it's it, it okay. isn't a yeah, big yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, spoiler. Or and anything, yeah. it was just uh just her interactions with people and how because. I didn't read the synopsis before I read it. I just, I just opened it. And so when I saw, I just thought she was going to be like, you know, just a sassy. She's just, you know, <laughs> she's just being cute or whatever. But then I'm like, oh, sh like shit, she's a vampire. Okay, cool. And uh, they're bored. They've been doing the same thing for a long time, day in, day out. So uh, one of them decides he's going to be a superhero. And it, I just think the cons, he took uh, classic comic book tropes and even like hard tropes and it, it, it's fun. It's, it's different, but it feels familiar. That's why I picked it. Yeah. And uh, that character that you were mentioning, she gives off big time Golden Gale vibes, right? Because like mm -hmm. she's an older woman trapped in a little girl's body, right? So it definitely yeah. gives off these big, big Golden Gale golden gale vibes and she has the same kind of wit uh, like <laughs> a snappy she, comeback when said, yeah <laughs> when they yeah. said um like her the the excuse they give like patrons and the police like whenever they're in the diner like oh she's allergic to the sun and i was like yeah mm, that's kind of weak but it's like yeah, it's yeah. like weak enough that it's believable like oh okay we can we can go and, with that <laughs> and it's like you're vampires and you're gonna say she's allergic to the sun it's like D yeah. trying to be like <laughs> try to bury the lead a little you know like right. <laughs> and then no, it was good i enjoyed it yeah and i think that's why i kind of went with it because it's it was just fun and i think yeah. um like with did you read afterlift no i haven't gotten to that yet it's right it's in my digital queue and uh i want to read that and howard the duck and i haven't even gotten to howard the duck yet either so oh man i read um life story spider-man like and i'm not big on like marvel uh or even spider-man like i'll read uh mm -hmm. events or specials but life story man that made me want to go back and read so much spider-man and uh yeah. what was that and i know he wrote spider shadow too which i really enjoyed this year yeah as well. that's supposed to be very good yeah if people haven't picked that up that's a what if story but it's yeah. it's told over five four or five issues so it's a more elaborate yeah. what if story yeah Life, life story is like that too like it's alternate it, well i don't think well I, i'm gonna be real with you i haven't followed much spider-man but it felt like <laughs> each each decade it was like oh this isn't something in a typical uh you know spider-man mm -hmm. but yeah i've read a little bit of the life story it was pretty good i enjoyed it oh that's why he disappeared i had to go use the washroom there you go. Hey, your audio is not too bad with that on. I thought it would be more muffled than that, but uh, I could hear you pretty good, actually. How's my sound coming through? 
Not I bad. Not it. bad. I gotta get in the spirit, man. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so you just you just left in the middle of your top three. So do you want to finish <laughs> up or what? <laughs> like fuck this noise. I'm uh, I'm taking uh, off, man. Uh, his <laughs> top. <laughs> his top three was so good that he fucking <laughs> bailed on it. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, my top three, <sighs> man. That Texas blood. Number uh, number eleven in the third spot, and and number one and two um, of all nighter, all nighter. Yeah, yeah because man. they both dropped uh, in the same week. It was uh, crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. it's weird, but hey, why not? I'm not gonna complain if I could get two issues in in Listen, the same week. I, I gotta say, man, these comicsology originals, they have been my favorite reads mm-hmm. uh, for like the past three weeks. Snyder's Night of the Ghouls, um. What was the other one he did? Uh, uh, Demon. I didn't read the Demon one. He had a, Demon and yeah. Clean? Clean. Clear. Yeah. Clear. 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 Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And now with the All Nighters. Uh, See? I've also you... read uh, uh, Lemire's, Jock and Lemire's uh, Snow Angels was good. I read Hailstone. Oh, Hailstone Oz. was. Lost Oz yeah. is one of my favorites going yeah, on right man. now. Yeah, man. It's really good. And they're all coming out in print form. So if you. You digital snobs out there don't like that. Well, yeah. Dark Horse is releasing all these in print form. So you could pick up all these stories. They're all great. And you could get them all through Dark Horse and in print form. Yeah. So I, w- I was saying, you know, during the interview, man, I was really slow to, to kind of just jump on the digital stuff. But I'm warming up really quickly, mm-hmm. especially when you have such fantastic uh, titles coming out. And they're only available digitally, right? So, um, hey. If it weren't for digital, I wouldn't have gotten back into collecting like I do. Yeah. Because mm. that's, it was a, it's a good, ch- like, if you're on a budget, uh, the digital copies are usually slightly cheaper than the physical ones. So mm-hmm. it's a good way to save money, man, if you go digital. Mm. I, and I think with DC Infinite, I don't know if you guys have that. Uh, uh, in Canada, no. we can't get it. No. No. I think they do six months. So if you pay the premium, then um, at six months after the drop, that's when the singles are available for free yeah. on there. Well, not free. You're, you're still paying. I think I think Marvel Unlimited is uh, their three months. So you're oh, three okay. months behind on the issue. So it's roughly the same thing. Yeah. Mm, Sergio, so. you're going to – do you have a little skit for us in that or – Nope. Nope. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> our top three, our top three of uh, of the week. Hey, pretty straightforward. I'll copy my picks uh, as usual. Uh, as usual. Hey, hey, what else do we got going on? Uh, copper drop. Are we doing copper drop this week? Yeah. Sick, sick. Who's uh, who's going <sighs> first? Oh well, just just briefly, I wanted to touch on Pop Star Assassin because we did pick it last week, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was a book that was read. <laughs> I think that's an accurate statement. It was it was a pick. You know. <laughs> did you guys you guys read uh Pop Star Assassin? Did yep. you? I did. Did did oh. you? <laughs> the silence is, says there. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so it was um <laughs> I, didn't hear your question. I couldn't tell with the brick head. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Uh. so it's it's about this guy you know he's trying to figure out who killed his father he's coked up drugs mobs it, it was okay i like the coloring in it outside of that I'm, I'm probably not gonna keep i think it's 12 issues um mm, it this could is pick a behemoth up. book yeah i probably would wait for yeah. a trade yeah uh so you're you're definitely going to be a drop then from the sounds of it? Uh, for now, yeah. I'll probably yeah, get the trade. I, the Demons, I usually, I've, I, I, pretty, I buy a lot of their trades. I, w- I will say that. So Yeah. Joe, what, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, for me, I, I get what they were trying to do with this. I get where they were trying to go, but it just didn't land with me. The okay. humor didn't land with me. Uh, you know, they're trying to go with that cheesy 70s action over the top, uh, kind of kind of an exploitation feel to it, which 
I, mm-hmm. they didn't nail the landing. It kind of had a little bit of that Hunter S. Thompson. They're trying to channel that a little bit. I felt oh. with the uh, with the woman uh, invading his psyche, and he's kind of uh, had a more of a psychedelic aspect, and it's in Vegas. And I think they're trying to trying to play on that. And you know, there's there's a classic movie, the Bubba Hotep, and uh, uh, you know where Elvis is retired and this and that, and it's kind of a horror action. I think that's what they're trying to go for, like a bit of a campy, over the top mm-hmm. action. And I just found that they didn't nail it. And mm-hmm. I found the pacing and and the way the story and, and the dialogue went, I I found it was choppy and sometimes messy, and it it, it didn't flow or follow really well. Like it, it could get a little confusing at times. Like mm-hmm. with the dialogue, like it didn't seem like it followed naturally, like a progression. I don't know. I it was a little bit all over the place for me. The art was it good, felt like Elsa. It felt yeah. loud. Like you know when you're in a room and it's too much, you're overstimulated. That's what it felt like reading. Yeah. And oh uh, really? Okay. Too much going yeah. on. Too much going on. Like between the the bubbles and the, and the art, the and, colors, yeah. and the what's actually happening. It's it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's they they just slightly missed the mark. I found on it. Okay. But I I totally get what they're trying to do, and mm-hmm. maybe maybe they'll pull it together in the next issues. But if I had to go just off this first issue, then uh, for me it's a drop. Mm-hmm. It's a drop. So it's a drop from L. It's a drop from Joe. Uh, in that case, you guys don't need to hear my thoughts on on Pop Star mm-hmm. Assassin. Were there I, thoughts? I really I really <laughs> wanted. You know, there's no sense. I mean, it's it's been decided. Uh, are hey. Lego heads hollow? Like the t- <laughs> in that, no, no. In sincerity, are they hollow or are they filled? They're filled with a sl- oh. with a, just a little hole for the the peg to go in. Oh, hmm. okay. So pegs and okay, hollow filled. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio, so it's a drop. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's hollow in the neck. <laughs> it's a drop. Uh, it's a drop. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which is surprising because usually Behemoth is pretty solid. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Behemoth. Behemoth. They, they put out some good stuff. Um, yeah. But I mean, this one. Uh, not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. No. No. Yeah. No. So so you guys you guys know how how copper drop works. Um, myself and Al are gonna be pitching a book to Joey. Um to read for next week uh you know we're only we're only allowed one 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 book one homework assignment per week uh so joe is going to be the deciding factor i've got a pick ready uh to pitch to him al has got a pick ready to pitch to him and i believe uh am i up first though oh uh, you are i am okay perfect and uh yeah so um my pick was an easy one. Provenance of Secrets, number one. This is from Black Caravan, a uh, Scout Comics imprint. Uh, It is from the same creative team of Tales Told in Technohar. Technohar, yeah. I want to say maybe three or four months ago. Um, Fantastic, fantastic creative team. You got uh, Kiaran Tegan. He was the writer. Christian Dabari is the artist, and Simon Go is the colorist. Um, this is a cosmic horror noir story set in the same universe as the King in Yellow uh, novella story. Um, I haven't personally read King in Yellow. But I know it's like a it's like a cult classic. It, it, Robert Chambers is, I believe that's that's the gentleman's name who wrote King in Yellow. Uh, so set in the same universe, we got a uh, a, a detective, uh, you know, po- post World War II. Um, he's a he's a war vet, and uh, he he kind of picks and chooses cases. Uh, so he stumbles into this uh, kind of grisly, uh, you know, murder scene. And we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, is it a murder? Is it a suicide? You know, so crime, noir, mystery, and uh, just a really, a spoiler alert, uh, we had the opportunity here at the House of Nerd to read an advanced copy. 
And I gotta say, man, listen, Providence of Secrets number one is a solid, solid book, man. Really, really fantastic stuff. Um, I know for a fact, Joe, you're gonna love. It. I know with a hundred percent certainty. <laughs> this you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it, buddy. It's just All right. really, really, really sets the tone and the mood, and and it builds and it builds. And uh, you know, you got fantastic interior. Christian Debari, man. Holy shit, man. He, he he's like he's doing some great stuff. Uh, have you have you checked out Tales Told in Techno Horror? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you're familiar. Yeah. It, it just really yeah. his art style lends its well south uh, to uh, to the horror genre. Yeah. Um, th this is another uh, fantastic um, book from that team. Yeah. That that is nice. my pick. That is my pick. That is my pitch to you, Excellent. my good man. So, uh, Sergio's right. This was a fantastic first issue. And so, with that being said, what if I just conceded now? <laughs> there you go, Joe. Hey, you, you, you never know, man. Go. So, <laughs> hey, hey. What? What did you pick, so, oh, I'm pick, I picked um, After Dark, the Aftershock Core Anthology, One Shot. You got four stories. Um, Colin Bunn, Jim Starlin, Joe Pruitt, Frank Thierry, and uh, four different stories. Man, that's Rangian. a solid lineup of writers. Jim yeah. Starlin's writing a story on there. Yeah, there's four stories. Man, that's that's a hard, that's a big four, selling point. Jim Starlin, you get four man, four stories. He's a legend. One book. One book a, that's stories. a legend, and so right there, right in. The okay, content. Jim Starlin. Mm. Mm. Let's lean in on that. How how do you mm. feel about him? He's pretty cool, huh? He's one of your faves. Mm. No, but he's a man. He wrote uh, <laughs> he wrote some he wrote some classic <laughs> stories at DC Marvel. Like I mean, he's a big name in uh, in comics. Yeah, it's... but if you if you pick this book, Joe, then you're gonna have trouble. Like this is the oversized, you know. Like how are you? Gonna I dig it? I I dig the oversized stuff. I like the magazine format. It's a headache to store. No, but we don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that. There's a story about spiders. Sergio's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I do not. I do the not. Art looks good. Who, what are the What are the artists on this again? Uh, we got uh, penciled by Cliff Richards, mm. Nicole Jelenic, Jelenic, mm. Simon mm -hmm. Kudransky, and Joe Eisma. I gotta I gotta say, y'all, you don't sound too informed on on your pick there. I mean, I was able to list oh, off let's, my let's just on say. My <laughs> Yeah. Because how many times have we gone over? Hey, hey, <laughs> this guy, never mind, never mind. I, it, it's because that, that book was so good, you can't forget that creative. Team. Look, you know, I'm gonna be real. I Providence of Secrets was fantastic. Like, absolutely mm -hmm. can't wait to have the physical copy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when is that releasing? Next, that's obviously next week if it's the copper drop. Yeah. That so the way you guys are talking about it, I, I'll, I'll do this in a very uh, democratic way. Obviously, this is going to make both your top threes next week. The uh, the other issue. Oh, yeah. to so I'm going to go with After Dark just so you guys cover more content next week. <laughs> because, you know, you know it's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna chew into the two segments, man, because you know it's gonna be in your top three. So I'm going after dark because I love okay. aftershock. Aftershock right. is like one of my favorite publishers. Okay, and they Especially haven't the led me wrong. Oh, the, so good. The one shots are aren't bad. Yeah, they're pretty the good. But I just like the way the you guys format the size, the nice hand feel. You know, the way you guys are talking about that other book, I have a feeling it's gonna be both be in your top threes. So, so I don't want it to overlap into the other segment of the cop and drop. So that, that's that's my Ooh. my uh, that's my reasoning there. I don't know about that, buddy. Yeah, I think he go. picked yeah. the right thing. I think he did the right thing. We got, you know. Yeah, but you already said it's excellent, so people are gonna go pick up the other one anyway. Okay, because you've already read well, it, so it's reading. it's already copped. So fair enough, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, before we uh, wrap up. Uh, did you want to touch on Tracovi, Joe? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Tracovi is a 
indie book that uh, done by Adrian Kalaric. And uh, he just finished up his Kickstarter. It was a very successful, successful Kickstarter. And uh, uh, he should be releasing uh, the book within the next couple months. He should be sent them out. He already sent out the PDFs. Uh, I don't know if the PDFs are on his shop at uh, thinkitem.com. You could go check him out there. He's got his own website. Uh, so basically, it's a story of a, uh, heroes that or villains, I should say, that are going into a villain rehab kind of thing, or AA, and, uh, you know, he's trying to get uh, get his life on the right tracks, but, uh, you know, the call of uh, mischief and and robberies and is just too strong for him, so it, it leads into a bunch of debauchery. Uh, the art is fantastic. It's It's got a very gritty, loose, fun, vibrant vibe to it that's just breathtaking like man you when this is available to order online everyone should go pick this up it's it's a great great book and it's done uh, it's created by uh in Ed edmonton uh, al burden from edmonton he's uh he's the one who created it so yeah. yeah and he's a street artist right so he's he's a very he works as an artist anyway Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a lot of great things to go check out on his think, uh, think item, uh, website at thinkitem.com. So go check out his other work. He does more than just comics and, uh, it's, it's very cool. He's a very cool, creative guy. So, so Joe, he's the writer and the artist on his book. Yeah. He's a cartoonist, man. He does exactly. everything, lettering, art, everything. He's a, a cartoonist in the truest form of the word. Okay. And, and the, the pages are... About. The pages are so good. Yeah. The use of gutters, the because he yeah. utilizes the whole page, and so yeah. you you feel like right there with them because um like how just like he was saying the grittiness of it like you feel it like the pages look like it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, he put it's super cool. Yeah, he the put like cup, ring, cup yeah. stains, yeah, rings yeah. on it, and like graffiti kind of tagging off into the corner, running off the page. Uh, it's it's definitely a stylish book. And these man. are like, people that are like not likable, but you love them. Like I care about all these characters. Yeah. They're not the best people. <laughs> but it's it was a really cool read. Like I really enjoyed those two issues. Yeah, like the style of the art and the story just match up. Like it's a per it's perfect. Like it's a perfect mm -hmm. marriage of like visual and storytelling. Like uh and he's already started working on issue three, which uh which will be coming out. Uh, I'm not sure when he doesn't have an exact timeline. He just started, but uh, yeah, he's going to, he's planning on doing another Kickstarter for issue three. So look, keep your eyes out for that. All right. We're going to, we're going to be sure to plug. Um... Oh, Adrian's actually in the chat. So hey, Adrian, Adrian, man. Yeah. I wasn't sure if he'd be there because he's uh, like Ellie's uh, he's two hours behind, I think, cause I'll, he's in mountain time. So okay. not quite three hours, but yeah. Okay. So it's still morning for him. Uh, is, so the Kickstarter, it's it's closed now, though, eh? Yeah, it's or closed. It's, he okay. uh, he finished up, but okay. the book will be available for sale on his uh, shop on his page, uh, thinkitem.com. That's amazing, and you know we're yeah. always down to support you know great uh, Canadian indie content, uh, just yeah. great content in general. And so it's a mm. plus that you know, good old Canadian boy, love it, love yeah. it. So, love it. hey. When I know it's, I don't know if he's in the chats, if he could say when it's going to be on his shop, but when it is, I'll be on Twitter telling people and uh, man, like go pick this up, go order it because it's, it's a great book. Okay. All right. That's cool, man. Trakovi, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trakovi. Okay. The Slav with no remorse. All right. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out. Uh, I'm going to read it uh, hopefully in the next day or so. Um, yeah. I mean, it sounds, it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Awesome. Uh, so uh, for next week, we've got uh, we're going to be reading the after, excuse me, the aftershock one shot prestige one shot, uh, oversized format. Um, I hate the oversized format. I hate storing them. So you know what, man, I end up picking it up. Uh, I'll probably <laughs> do a little. I'll, I'll do a little giveaway or something. I'll. Uh, I'll. I, I don't. I don't want to store that. You know. <laughs> Oh, well, go get oh. it digitally, man. You said you're starting to get into digital. Does Buy it digitally. Oh. There you go. Problem solved. Aftershock do digital. Practice what you preach. I'm sure they do digital. Yeah? I'm almost positive. Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. Okay. Go, go look into it. Go look into yeah. it. 
I'm absolutely, man. So, okay, no, you know what? In all seriousness, looking forward to reading that. I mean, Aftershock puts out amazing content. So, uh, yeah, man. All right. Uh, um, do do people want to know why I'm dressed up more than the rest of you? Well, who said we're not here? dressed up? Well, hey. I can't even see you, El, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, last night, I went to a murder mystery dinner, and today's Halloween, so I decided to put on the same outfit. So, uh, I could get up and let people see the whole thing. Yes. <sighs> Whoa, my man looking dapper. <laughs> you look, you're looking good, buddy. Yeah, it was uh, Buffalo Bob was my character. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I dig so it. That, oh, what's, that's what's, it, man. What's your costume? You got anything going on? It looks like uh, you went as you with no hat on. Hey. No hat, Sergio. Hmm. Interesting. That's what it, you look like when Hair you take reveal. it off. <laughs> <Hair> <laughs> <reveal>. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Man. I got some stuff put together. I was going to do Leslie from Unnatural. Okay. Uh, that's that's the, what the... the... The cute little pig. Mm, with <laughs> the tail. Yeah, <laughs> with the yeah, tail. That little, that little tail. All right. no. maybe, maybe next year. Good thing you didn't. I wouldn't no, be able no, to No, no, I have composure. all the stuff. It's a, might be an Instagram situation, though. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, shit. Okay, so folks, uh, I'll be sure to include. No, her Instagram's already in the description <laughs> of the video. At least it should be. Uh, so make sure to sub up to her uh, Instagram uh, page, uh, and we're going to be disappointed if we don't we don't see some cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, but before we get out of here, guys, we got we got a we got a, an announcement. Uh, oh, let me know when you have that ready. Mm. Uh, guess next week. Uh, check it out. Oh, you know what? Here, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it. I got it. Yeah, boom. Yo, so we got we got the OBE team out of body experience on the show next week. We got uh, CM Bratton and Carrie Valderrama. Man, we're hyped. We're hyped to have him on the show next week. OBE out of body. If you guys haven't read it uh, already, man, highly, highly recommend. Just an entertaining book. Uh, you hear me talking about it all the time here. Every time uh, an issue has dropped, it's uh, it's made my top my top three picks. Uh, so we're in. we're excited. We're hyped. We're gonna have him on the show next week, live in the flesh. CM Braden, uh, Terry Valderrama, the writers, co-creators of. OBE out of body from Antarctic Press. And uh, next week, I'm going to make sure that you guys were able to comment and, you know, participate in the live chats, man. I know, you know, we had Chip and Jacob and and, and you guys wanted to, you know, be more involved in the show. Um, so we'll get that all sorted out for you. But yeah, you know, we're going to have a good time. And, uh, and Joe, you know, man, you know, we're going to have to have, uh, you know, uh, if you're not on the show, uh, at least a vid or something, we'll work that out, man. We got to get your opinion yeah. on because this is your pick now. Yeah. So the pressure's on. The uh, pressure's pretty on. sure it's on. Pretty sure it's on my poll. So. Okay. All righty. <laughs> there you go, man. Hey, thanks everybody for coming out, man. Uh, we had a great time, Joe. Thank you so much, man. Hey, my pleasure. This is, yeah, uh, it was awesome to sit down and be able to chat with uh, Chip and Jacob. Yeah, yeah, this is your second time on. I think I think you might be the first, the first two timer. Uh, crosses? No. Oh no, Mason, Mason. Yeah, Mason's crosses. probably been on a couple okay. times. Yeah. We're gonna have mm -hmm. to get you uh, on for a third time, though, buddy. Hey. Hey. Just ask, man. I'm uh, usually available. Yeah, man. Hey, had lots of fun. I'll thank you for all the the behind the scenes uh work and tech stuff, man. Appreciate it. Next week. Same, same time, 11 a.m., the House of Nerd Show, man. Thank you, everybody, for coming out, man. We had a great time, yeah? All yeah, right, it was always a pleasure. All righty. <laughs>